Hey there, I'm your buddy. I'm your guy. I came through, I actually showed up, right? I'm like the deadbeat dad who finally decided to come to like your birthday party or something and actually tell you something cool. Yeah, it's David Wilcock, it's me, and I'm here in my beautiful set. We've uh, built this one here in where we are right now, the undisclosed location. And boy, do I have a show for you today. We are going to be getting into some very interesting things uh, because there was a, in case of emergency, please break the glass prophecy encoded in the Law of One series, which again is the source text that has been so central to all the work that I've done over so many years. Uh, just, just to give you a brief overview, if you haven't really seen all the work that I've done, it's kind of taken a convoluted path. It started out being very, very esoteric, uh, where I had found intuitive material called the Law of One, beginning in the year 1996. And this was after I had graduated college in 1995. And the Law of One series had a huge impact on me, although it wasn't 96, it was 98, I believe, that I found it. Um, no, it was 96. I'm sorry. It was 96. It's, it's been a long time ago. But uh, when I read this material, it was incredibly fascinating to me. My new book, Awakening the Dream, talks about it. The Law of One is purported to be extraterrestrial angelic communication from some sort of group of beings that claim to be three-dimensional levels higher in their spiritual advancement than what life on Earth is at right now. So, life on Earth right now is third density. That means we have, you know, the third stage of this cosmic universal evolution, according to this work. But they are claiming to be not fourth density, not fifth density, but all the way up at sixth. Now, who is they? The source of the Law of One claims to be a group of humans who originated on Venus when Venus was once Earth-like and habitable, which they claim was 2.6 billion, with a B, 2.6 billion years ago. Okay, so 2.6 billion years ago, what they're claiming is that, that Venus was like the Earth. It had oceans, it had atmosphere, it had continents, it had water, and it had humans. And those humans also went through something like what we're going through right now, the Law of One talks extensively about the idea that planets are inhabited, that, you know, there's life all over the place, and they always go through these 25,000-year cycles. This implies that there's some sort of natural law in celestial mechanics that would cause this to happen. The 25,000-year cycle is said to be an event, it's a, it's a unit of time where at the end, there is some sort of dimensional shift that transforms life on that particular planet. And this apparently is very common, and this is in fact why a planet like Earth even exists. Now, before I go on opining about the Law of One, I want to make it clear that despite these seemingly outrageous sounding narratives that I just shared with you, this material gets very granular into science that we can prove. And so what I've been able to do over the years in four different books that have been published through Penguin Random House, now two of which are New York Times bestsellers officially, the other two should have made the list but didn't, for probably because of their content. The New York Times does not require to tell you why they pick or don't pick someone for the list. So the third and fourth books didn't get it, and that's when I became, I guess, more of a threat. But those books debuted, relatively speaking, on the Nielsen ratings, I think, in the top ten, both of them. So sh sh certainly I should be a quadruple New York Times bestseller, but the, I don't even care anymore because it's up to them what they want to say. Whether they want me to be that or not is their discretion. What? This is the microphone, I believe. It, it, they're both the same. It won't make any difference now I fix it. Check, check. Oh, this is the one. It won't make any difference, but if you want me to change mics, I will. Yeah, so folks, we've also had, it's not, but we've had an enormous, enormous amount of work going on in terms of understanding our audio gear and trying to get it to work as well as possible. So now I have two microphones. There you go. So you can pick either one you want, whichever one you think sounds better. But they're both on me now. 
All right, that's what happens when you're live. You just got to go with it. But uh, no, I actually learned a whole lot about audio recording recently, and um, you have to actually throw enough voltage into the microphone in order for it to not pick up a bunch of noise. So then what you have to do is throw the voltage in and take it back out. And there's a function on your audio device called PAD, which stands for something attenuation device or whatever. And that's what we had to do. We had to turn the pad on, crank up the gain. We got rid of the noise. There's some new great plugins from Apollo. That's the console I use. Apollo has come out with this thing called C-Suite CVox. And it is a real-time noise reducer. So live, I can take out all the noise. And so I think we're getting a much more high quality audio signal now because I spent a lot of time tweaking Compressor, limiter, yeah, so, okay, good. So, yeah, with the compressor, we've got, we're using the Teletronics LA-2A Silver. The limiter is the UA-1176LN. And then we're using the C-Suite C-Vox plug-in, as I said, and then we're also running it through the Blackmagic Design ATEM Studio Pro Switcher, which then adds its own Fairlight compressors and noise reducers on it, all live. So I'm actually really happy with what we've gotten. So she says everybody's happier now, so we'll, we'll go with that. Um, there is something very strange about these two microphones I have. We bought the same model, but one of them does appear to sound a lot better than the other. I thought I had fixed that, but now you're saying it's still that way. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I know some of you really hate it when I go off topic. So if you want to be angry and if that's going to make you feel better about yourself as a human being, go ahead and slag me off for talking about freaking audio. I don't care. All right, what are you snapping your fingers for? <laughs> the point is, we get distracted because it's live. This is not a regular pre-tape, so whatever happens, we got to go with it. Okay, going back to the main camera here. Uh, the law of one is obviously, if you've ever spent any time looking at my work, the source of so much of what I've done. Somehow, all this research that I did in the 1990s led to me becoming enough of an expert that I managed to get on Ancient Aliens on History Channel which they've been running constantly. I mean, it's all over Amazon, it's all over Netflix, everywhere. And it's also one of the most popular shows on television in many countries, actually, as I found out. So I'm in over 100 episodes of that, statistically, and there's like 120 or something. I'm not sure how many they are now. Maybe there's more. So I get recognized a lot. In case you haven't already seen me, um, people say, don't I know you? And all the time, everywhere I go, everybody wants to take my picture. I'm very cool about it. I'm, I'm good with that stuff. But the point is, all of this, the, the best-selling books, the ancient aliens appearances, all of this came to me from studying the law of one, discovering absolutely fantastic scientific information inside this material, and then realizing that the science has been proven after the fact. In other words, when we go into where, okay, over here, yeah, we got to go to this next camera, yep. Yeah. When we, Because she's got to do a bunch of stuff on the desk, folks, so if she misses a cut, it's because we don't have any other staff. <laughs> There's one person doing everything, and that's my wife, okay? So give her a big round of applause. Thank you. So when we do this work, when we're going through this Law of One material, uh, it, it to me is, you know, par excellence. It's the best stuff there is because they're making very, very complex statements about the way that the universe works, that, that are being discussed with a guy who has a PhD in physics. He's actually a doctor of physics, and his name's Dr. Don Elkins. Now, Elkins did not necessarily understand a lot of what the source was telling him, so if you think it's going to be some high-level discussion where everybody's patting each other on the back and everybody's always right, no, I mean, when I first started to read The Law of One, uh, after I got out of college in 1996, this is when I started to read the answer before I read the question because just trying to understand what the question was sometimes would drive me crazy. And then the answer would say, no, you're wrong. And it's like, well, if he's wrong, I want to know in advance that he's wrong before I read his question. So I would always read the answer first and then I'd read the question. This material was so complicated. It has such a deep syntax, a grammar and it's so much specific information that's new that when I first started reading it throughout the year 1996, I'd spend 45 minutes, literally, without turning the page. I'd be on one page reading the two pages and meditating and contemplating on the information and trying to make sense out of it. And part of what you have to do 
that makes the law of one very unique is that it is not written in any type of linear narrative at all. It's a collection of answers to questions in dialogue. And Don Elkins goes all over the place. His questions totally jump around. It's infuriating. There's hardly any continuity in the book at all. But if you remember everything that they tell you, and this is very important, if you remember the answers, and you can actually like remember, okay, well, yeah, back in session 30, they said da da da, or, or just you don't need to know the session number, but if you can remember the answers, what I discovered over the course of that year, and I basically read it all the time throughout 96, was that it's incredibly internally consistent. I couldn't find philosophical or logical contradictions in the material. And then they're making various uh, curious statements about the nature of reality. They're getting into things like the idea that the u this is one of the biggest ones, okay? The universe is alive. Well, that kind of makes sense when you think about it, right? Because you're alive, I'm alive, we live on Earth. The laws of the universe allowed this life to happen here. It's kind of preposterous to think that this would be the only place where that would happen. And now that we've identified some 40 billion with a B, Earth-like planets just in the Milky Way galaxy, even stars that they didn't think would be able to have planets, stars that are not like the sun, that are more red, turns out they also have planets, okay? 40 billion, I mean, that many Earths in our solar system, that means it, it shouldn't be that hard to find another one if we screw this one up. But that's not really how it works. You don't just get to trash one planet and relocate. You have to fix the planet you're on. And we are all here together. And so the next big thing that the Law of One tells us, besides the universe being alive, is that there is only one identity in the universe. And that's why it's called the Law of One. Now, this is extremely bizarre because, well, wait a minute. I, I appear to have one identity. I appear to have a body and hands, and you're seeing me on a video, right? You're not me. So I'm different than you, theoretically, right? Because you're over there and I'm over here. I'm using this technology to make this show happen. Okay, let's go over here now. See, I got all these cool sets for you to look at. This is like audio and everything. So many things. Three. It's number three, I believe. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so here I got this little cool goddess hiding behind me in my and that's that's from my wife's set, but we left it in there. I like I like her hanging out there. Uh, no, it's not Lucifer, for God's sake. Anybody tries to say this, this is the divine feminine, okay? That's what she represents. Nothing bad. And I got my studio behind me, all that stuff. We're, we're working on music, lots of things are going on. So, at this point in time, the Law of One has told us that the universe is alive and that there's only one identity. And that's the identity that we all share. So then the universe lays on this very strange concept that we are all suffering amnesia and that if we had the full access to our memory and our mind and who we really are, that would be the mind of the creator. Another very interesting thing is that any of us at any time can reunify with the mind of the one infinite creator. Usually when this happens, you're going to feel inspiration and love. You're going to feel uplifted. You're going to feel happy. You're going to feel excited about your life, excited about what's going on. And when you feel that level of inspiration, when you feel invigorated, purposeful, excited, uh, and all the, everything in your life seems to be going really well for you, in those moments, you are, you are closer to the one infinite mind that you came from. You are actually interfacing with that mind. So a lot of times we mistakenly end up worshiping people who create healthy inspiration in us as if they were the source of the inspiration and not the same creator that is within us that we see reflected in them. I hope this makes sense. Let me say it again. We don't want to get caught up in projection. This is a very important thing. Dr. Carl Jung said that the greatest gift we can give others is to withdraw our projections from them. When we go through our lives, we're conditioned by our experiences, we're conditioned by our childhood, we're conditioned by negative events that took place in our lives that we don't really know how to forgive, how to let go of. People hurt us, people caused pain, 
And these can become wounds that are actually very debilitating. There's a, there's a great lack of clarity in our society right now about the incredible effect that mental health can have. And when you lack mental health, how debilitating that can really be. Well, in the case of projection, we are usually sending out negative attributes onto others and then seeing things in them that make us angry. And so the way that the cosmic beings explain this to me, because I have, if you read my books, I have had what appears to be very extensive telepathic and dream contact with higher intelligence beginning uh, all the way back in 1992. That's when I started to write my dreams down every morning. I've been doing it ever since then. So we're now going on almost 30 years. It's like 29 years. Writing my dreams down every morning, and, and as I've done in my previous classes, there is a language. Your dreams do talk in symbology and metaphor. And oftentimes there are metaphorical answers that are given to you in your dreams to the most pressing problems in your day-by-day -day life. Therefore, if you actually can learn what your dreams are saying, it will help you extensively. So my new book, Awakening in the Dream, does have the basics of that. I don't know, it's like 20 bucks. You can get it uh, on Amazon or wherever you'd like to pick it up. But I would highly recommend that as a supplement to what I'm giving you today because that book goes in way more detail than I can do here about the history of the Law of One, all kinds of stuff having to do with the prophecies that they gave and how it's all coming into fruition now. And the book also describes for the first time in any book my own involvement with them and how I received telepathic contact, how I worked very hard. I mean, it's like learning how to play concert piano. It's not easy to learn how to have contact with these beings telepathically. You have to be a great meditator. You have to have a great ability to quiet your mind down. You need to basically figure out how to get yourself free of anxiety, negative emotion, that kind of stuff. Then you have to do all these practices having to do with light as a feather, stiff as a board, mind awake, body asleep. Uh, I also like to use conversation as a meditation practice where I am very conscious of not saying anything other than complete sentences. And once I say this and then I start thinking about it, it's not going to work. I'll make an error. But for the most part, in the mid-1990s, I began this exercise of trying to speak in complete sentences and not use the crutch words that most people have. You often hear people say, well, I mean, the thing is, is that... Oh, I hate that one. I cannot stand the thing is, is that. And everybody does it right now. Everybody does it. Anyway, that's my pet peeve. When you get to this point of the telep telepathic interaction, uh, you're not supposed to have any emotional reactions to it. You're not supposed to get excited. You're not supposed to be sad. You shouldn't be hungry. And you don't want to analyze it. So you, you're hearing words and you just write them down or dictate them into a recording device, which is how I ended up doing it. And then you only transcribe it and try to analyze it later. And the analytical mind will destroy the results. If you are understanding what you're saying and you think you're channeling, then you're not channeling. Correct channeling, you do not know what you're saying. And it takes a very deep level of meditation to kind of get away from yourself enough that you can let this thing happen. Let the speaking take place without interfering with it, without thinking about it, without listening to it, without trying to understand it. You're just happy that it's happening and you just stay in this very blissful space, but you don't pay any attention to the words at all. If they sound like nonsense, if they sound like garbage, that's good. Because unfortunately, people want the words to sound right. They want the sentences to sound right. And if you do that, you're going to ruin it. So, because you're thinking about it. So this is all stuff I learned from remote viewing. I talk about it in the new book. Again, title is Awakening in the Dream. I don't have any here, uh, but I do have them over at the other place. So when I got to this level where I started to get this telepathic information downloaded to me, uh, in the 1990s, some very strange things started to come through. So the first kind of mind-blowing prophecy I want to go into is what my own work actually said. So let me go back to the computer here and show you something. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I've already set this up. I'm going to do that. And then we're going to do this. Okay, so theoretically, this... So can you see that on the screen? Sweetheart? Okay, good. 
So this was, as you can see right here, April 15th, 2009. So this is now 12 years ago that I wrote this. Prophecies we published in 1999 have now foretold with uncanny accuracy what is happening right now. The New World Order is on its last legs, making desperate endgame maneuvers, because remember, this was right after the 2008 economic collapse. But the most exciting part is the prophecies that haven't come true yet. So here's the link. You can see this. It's in David's blog, April 15th, 2009, right? Okay, now, let's go scroll down to the same stuff I was just talking about, the law of one, we're all one. And I talk about the miraculous technology that's going to be released when this comes out. Limitless free energy, gravity shielding technology, healing devices, Stargate travel. Okay, all of these things are being withheld from us, and I've heard from many insiders that they will be revealed, and, and I'm working very hard on that goal myself now. Okay, so I said these technologies exist, and we talk about the New World Order, that this is the group that's holding back the technology, right? Remember, this is 2009. They're deliberately engineering chaos. They want us to be their servants. They want us, they want us to be slaves. Okay, and it requires a money system. I said all this, growth and evolution. Let's just go down a little bit more. And I'm talking about how victims become perpetrators, uh, that, you know, when we get abused as children, we end up becoming perpetrators as adults. This is what's happened to these people. And you have to learn to be your own protector without loving without losing the love and peace you feel inside. This is very important. Setting boundaries lovingly. And then I did my music album at the time, Wander Awakening, which I like. Some people didn't like it, so I don't usually promote this anymore. But uh, it basically sounds like 70s soft rock. That's a big commercial, which I had to put in there because, you know, we have to survive. Okay, so this let's get down to where the readings are. So I'm talking about the decline breakup of the USA. You know, 2009, they were already trying to say this. But then, and Texas seceding, right? This was another thing that was going on at the time. Okay, so, yeah, you see, I write a lot of stuff. Okay, so this is the first reading that was uh, described, but, you know, the, in this article from 1999, April 21st, 1999. So I want you to see some of what, this is what was coming in on this high-level telepathic connection. Uh, think about such things as the Roswell crash and their resultant effects on your civilization. Although these discoveries will seem quite stunning, meaning they're implying it's going to go public, right? It is a simple case of the questions never being asked properly in the past. It is time for the gladiators to step out of the cage. It is time for the nuclear traders to suit up into their fourth dimensional bodies and leave behind the world they have been so vehemently stomping upon in the present moment. It is necessary for each of us, those of you on Earth, to stop playing our respective roles, in this case vampire, werewolf, etc., and instead embrace each other in the common bond of mutually assured trust. Trust will build far more bridges and rebuild communities than destruction ever could. Now look at this. The current globalist agenda is likened in many ways to F-ism, and I'm not going to say it out loud for obvious reasons right now. Although it is necessary for you to eventually have global government, we will say it is indeed the power structure as it now stands that wishes for global government and FISM to occur. And without the cooperation of all countries involved, there are indeed going to be rising aggressions. It is interesting and very depressing for us to see that the plan and the prophecies are indeed playing out in such a literal fashion. We make these prophecies so that hopefully they do not come to pass, and yet this dreaded visitation of the specter of world war is again one that we must contend with. This is in 2009. We're only seeing something like this happening now. Understand that there are a few scarce opportunities we have for intervention in your global conflicts, and these come about in the most extreme cases. And we'll get into this, why the Law of One says that later. We will indeed do everything in our power to ensure that widespread nuclear usage in such a format never comes to pass. Be aware that even as the flimsy structures of the government topple and collapse, well, this certainly has not happened yet, right? That has not happened yet. But it is happening now, so it appears. The firm foundation of the everlasting rock of the soul is indeed gaining a new life within you now. In other words, don't worry about it. Seek to let this divine oneness within you have autonomy and conquer the parts of yourself that still exist in the fallen mode of separation and tears. Now let's go to another one. And this is, again, like the day after the last one. So April 21st, and then we're down here. We're on April 22nd. 
Now look at this. And, and remember, okay, let, let's go back to the camera. So I, I've proven that these readings were, were put out in 1999. You can go to a website called archive.org. You can look up these links, and you can prove that these were online in 1999. So again, anybody who wants to dispute this has to deal with the fact that we can prove legally that these were online in 99. We have the recordings, we have the transcripts, we have hard drives, all kinds of forensics, okay? This is definitely from 99. And then the article was online in 2009, okay? And this is right after the banking collapse of 2008. So everybody's, well, that's when I published it. But of course, the readings were in 1999. The banking collapse was in 2008, nine years later. Okay, so I want you to read with me what's going on here, because this is fascinating. Here we go. Ever wonder about the banking crisis? The top three most valuable computer gurus in the world still don't realize exactly how they will be affected by this. Hmm. I want you to stop right there with me and think for a minute. The top three most valuable computer gurus in the world still don't realize how exactly they'll be affected by this. No question one of them is Bill Gates, right? Obviously, because he was the head of Microsoft in 1999. Steve Jobs isn't around anymore. He would have been another one, but he's not here. Uh, and they don't realize how they will be affected by this. This, to me, is a suggestion of the mass arrests and that it's going to take place in the computer arena and the social media arena as well. And again, this is in 1999. Let's keep going. Most would seem to be wanting a quick and easy solution when the entire matter is actually flown away from and not professionally dealt with. And we've been wanting a quick and easy solution to what's going on now, but it's not happening. It's, it doesn't appear to be getting professionally dealt with. Now, look at this. I had no idea. So when you do the, the protocol, right, I didn't collect, even capitalize this until later because I didn't know whether they meant troops in a bush or whether they meant troops from Bush. But this was 99 before Bush won the 2000 election. In 99, they said, we have sought to undermine the Bush troops and their influence on the global political picture, this has failed us. The other night I had a dream about you, and it said the strictest Christians have become the most diehard opponents to Christianity in its fundamentalist forms, instead embracing the true reality of the oneness of the universe. There will never be a one-world hegemony of these financial powers. Never. Never. We do feel confident that with the appropriate training and forethought, you and your people could certainly attempt to create and to conform to a one-world government. Later on, it will be vitally important for your survival to do so. It is unfortunate for us to see that instead of a universal declaration of peace, this one-world government is coming about strictly through the erratic means of warfare and unseen alliances of superpowers in neighboring countries. Doesn't that sound very present? Understand that as you sit in stupor and continue to buy, buy, buy in the stock market, so too do we see the inevitable consequences of descending chaos in the world order and market schemata. We want to commend all of your people who continue to meditate for world peace, we'll do that again today, and attempt to construct positive changes in any way possible. And then I'm, we're talking about the cycles of history here. I'd already, you know, followed this. It is a fundamental fact that a connection has been established in historical cycles between events in the Roman regime and the United States regime. So too is there a fact that the United States regime must collapse and fold. Well, this is exactly what we seem to be seeing now, as did Rome, once thought to be the greatest superpower of the world. This is 1999, published in 2009, 12 years ago, coming true right now. When the Roman civilization did collapse, it was cause for great alarm. Similarly, the greed and desire for limitless profits is also now fueling the stock market's increases. As this is seen to fall away, meaning economic collapse, there will be many of those who have placed great faith in the stock market who will suddenly have all of their earnings vaporized and be left with stock that is completely devalued. This, again, looks much more likely now than ever before. So we talked about the 2000 election crisis in 9-11. And so uh, this was interesting because on May 27th, it said the average brother... And this is like Masonic Brotherhood, right? So they're talking about the Masonic Brothers. The average brother in your colonial building, which is a roundabout way of saying Congress, but again, they have to get past your conscious mind. They don't want you to, they don't want to say things too obviously sometimes. 
The average brother in your colonial building was open to a whole host of different tactics that would explain why the Constitution was in deferment. That's what's happening right now. Their minds are clever with hatred. Part of what we are seeing here in the present world picture is the machinations of their deeper plan. May 29th, we do not want to see the modern children of this generation being molested by a shadowy and insurgent world order that seeks conquest and hegemony. Now, this was really amazing. June 17th, 1999, this is a year before the 2000 election, right? The vice president looks at this, meaning the election, as being partly his own authorship while not realizing he's completely naked. Whoa, the interim period decides the next victor. This is an amazing sentence because it ended up perfectly predicting the election crisis in 2000 between Gore and Bush. Gore thought he could control the vote recounts in Florida. The vice president, because that's what he was at the time under Clinton, considers this his own authorship. He could do it. The New World Order neocon faction had already rigged the election. Hence, Gore did not realize he was completely naked in this battle and could not win. Just like it says, the interim period decides the next victor. The election did not have an immediate victor. There was a prolonged interim period between election day and the final decision, which came about through the Supreme Court. Hence, the interim period decides the next victor. Okay, so they predicted the 2000 collapse, and then immediately after this, look at what they say. The 2000 election collapse. Higher and higher, the chariot rises in the sky, and it will be seen by all. The buildings will be smoking, the people will be crying, and at that point it will already have been done. There will be other stages of it, of course, but this is an important point. So they're obviously talking about 9-11, right? The chariot is an airplane. It raises in the sky. It is seen by all on television. The buildings will be smoking. This is obviously the World Trade Center. People will be crying, and at that point it's already done. And there will be other stages of it later, okay? This is very, very fascinating. How did they know that there was going to be an interim period before the next victor of the election in 2000? And as I've talked about recently, this prophecy also fits now because the vice president, Biden, looks at this as being partly his own authorship while not realizing that he is completely naked. And the interim period decides the next victor. That's the period we're in now, I believe, because this is not a real election. So it seems to be. Okay, but then they immediately predict 9-11. Now look at what they say next, because this is all chronological. A new agreement in terms of international finance. So now we're into October 1999. And all this, again, is calibrated, I believe, to the present. What we are looking at here is a stifling of the individual human mind in an attempt to create great fear. That's very obviously happening now. We do not want these to appear to be isolated situations that cause extreme panic, but rather more as the lay of the land, as symptoms of the overall malady that has struck the earth at this time, meaning it's going to be a worldwide fear thing. The Big Brother scenario is indeed real. Big Brother is counting on us to not expose these truths as they have already been done. The subjugation of the populace warrants their ignorance. If they are to become smarter about what is happening to them, they might begin doing something about it. Thank God, finally now in 2021, this is what's happening on a much larger level. Indeed, as we have already said, it is precisely the focus of experience that these New World Order individuals are now going through that will give them so much more to lose when the final steps into the basement are then made. This is a dream metaphor because when you go into a lower level area, okay, let's go over here. Yeah, when you go into a, a lower level area, lower height in a dream, it means a lower vibration. So the final steps into the basement, that's exactly what's going on right now. We are in the final steps into the basement. We are in what you could call belly of the whale, uh, the, the moment of peak adversity, the dark night of the soul, the death of the hero, the apparent loss of the quest, the apparent loss of everything. One of the main arguments the law of one makes and that I've made is that there is a structure to our evolution on Earth, and it's the same structure that everybody in our galaxy has to go through. That structure is the mind of Christ. That In the law of one, they make it very clear. I talk about this in Awakening in the Dream. God the Father is the universe of galaxies, and they all have a one infinite consciousness as one identity. God the Son is the identity of the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy is an intelligent being with its own personality in this law of one system. 
and they say that it could be called Logos or love. But they also say that Jesus was the Logos. Therefore, when Jesus says, I am the Word made flesh, he said, actually, in law of one terms, I am the Logos made flesh. Because the word, word in the Bible, the original Greek, is Logos. Okay, so when Jesus says, I am the Word, he says, I am the Logos. That means Jesus is the mind of the galaxy, which is really cool, because now you don't have to think that extraterrestrials are bad. They're all going to become part of the Christ. They're all part of the Christ mind, which is our galaxy. We're way too limited in thinking that intelligence would only be on Earth or that any other place besides Earth where there's any type of intelligent life, they must be demons and they must be evil. If you actually read the Bible, they talk about extraterrestrials all the time. They call them messengers or agelos, angelos, angel, right? That's where it comes from. It's a Greek word. So the messengers have always been around. The angels have always been around. They're not fake, and they're not superstition. They're very, very real. And they used to walk among us, but then we got into a thing after Islam, 800 AD, where they pulled back. Because as soon as we start fighting over Shiite and Sunnite, and who gets to be in charge, it starts to be something they don't want. So what the Law of One says is that Jesus' message essentially got right to the core of what we want you to know. We is in people that are working on this initiative. It is the mind of the galaxy. You can't get away from it. You're not going to go through some other Christ. <laughs> you have to go through the Christ, which is the galaxy. God the, God the Son is the galaxy, okay? Which means that when we meet extraterrestrials, they are also going to be saved by the Christ because that's all there is. You can't get out of this. That's what it is. Love is consciousness. Consciousness is the universe. The Logos is Jesus. Jesus, apparently, we got a very special deal where the Logos, the galactic mind, which normally would be intangible, compressed itself into a human form and walked on Earth. And that's apparently very rare. So my insider, Pete Peterson, claims to have worked at Area 51 and many other government bases uh, on the secret side of things. And one of the ones that he worked at was down in Antarctica. There's apparently some great ruins down there that he got to see. And he went down to, to this base where there were, I guess he said, 14 different types of extraterrestrial humans there. And he actually struck up conversations with them. And more than one of these extraterrestrials that he got to personally meet said that the reason they came here was that the mind of the galaxy had embodied in a human being, that this is rare, and that they're really interested to see what's going to happen. But also because they don't really experience time the same way they do, even though Jesus showed up 2,000 years ago, for them this is, this is recently, okay? Because they can go through a lot of time with time travel. They don't need to be in any one place in time. Yet, there is kind of an emanation in the moment. In the present, there is an emanation that they cannot predict. They can look into our future and they can see probability vortexes. They can see what's most likely to occur. And honestly, they do it with incredibly stunning accuracy. I have never ceased to be amazed at how accurately they can see the future probability vortexes. Like the ones I've been reading you right here. I mean, this is all starting to sound uncannily familiar. The top three computer gurus in the world have no idea how this is going to affect them. Well, that's looking like a pretty big thing right now with how big tech has gotten rolled into all this, right? All of that came through in 99, and we all have the ability to do this. I am not saying I'm special. I'm not saying that I have any unique anointing from God or whatever you want to call it. All I'm saying is, look, we really need to de-emphasize this hero worship that we do. Please don't worship me. I am very flawed. I have lots of problems, but I do the best I can, and I'm trying to be in there. It's It's gotten crazy out there. When we posted this link today. Okay, I posted it last night. So I did it last night for, for a 4 p.m. show today. 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Okay, so I posted it last night at maybe like 9 o'clock. When I went and looked at it this morning, we had 2,468 comments already. Then we posted it on Facebook, and we went back to the YouTube page where this video is, where you're watching it right now, and the comments were gone. 2,468 of your comments just disappeared after we promoted it. So 
this is not uncommon for us, right? This is kind of consistent with what happens if someone else speaks and then there's a lot of negativity and they decide, you know, we better get rid of that. Let's just get rid of the comments on this one, you know, and let's let's get rid of the downvoting, you know. Unbelievable, the stuff that we're seeing and, and the manipulation. But I want to be clear that in law of one terms, this is not bad. This is a great awakening. This is a collective ascension experience that we are going through right now. The Law of One talks about what happens as we move from third density to fourth density. And they gave us different times in our recent history where there were sudden leaps forward in the fourth density energy. One of them is 1936, clearly given, and one of them is 1971, clearly given by accounting process. 36 and 71. So these are where, according to the law of one, that this fourth density, this new energy that is the energy of the open heart, the energy of Christ consciousness, is arising in humanity. And what they explain in this work, which again is the backbone of everything I've done, it's what led to me getting my own contact that I've been reading you. The law of one tells us that you will be defined by your actions and by your thoughts. Your life on earth is under evaluation Every second, every second that you live, you are being evaluated. What are you being evaluated for? You're being evaluated for your level of forgiveness. It is that simple. There is one word, and the word is forgiveness. And they give us this in the Law of One by saying a very important quote, In forgiveness lies the stoppage of the wheel of karma. Now, the wheel of karma they describe is a process by which you start at the top of the wheel, you crash down to the bottom, you got to dig yourself out of the bottomless pit, the dark night of the soul, you got to go all the way back up to the top. But then you're going to fall again, and it's like a wheel, because if you, until you learn forgiveness, the wheel keeps spinning. If you can properly learn and practice forgiveness, the wheel will go up to the top, and then it will stay there. And then at that point, you're no longer subject to random suffering happening over and over again. Well, forgiveness sounds all fine and good, but it also seems to be potentially counterproductive, right? If somebody is going to bash your head in and you're going to die, you don't want to just forgive them. Now, well, wait a minute, David, isn't that what Jesus did? Yeah, the law of one gets into this in extensive detail. Jesus' mission was specifically dialed in for him to be a martyr because of how badly damaged our planet is, and because people needed a very, very simplified spiritual message. So all the core is there, and it is Jesus, okay, so you're, you're worshiping the right guy. It's just that they wanted to make it a lot easier to understand, because there was many, many things that they had given us before trying to shed light on deeper levels of what it means to be human and what it means to be spiritual, and it got totally messed up. These positive beings originally told us about the pineal gland, the third eye in the center of the brain, that it is the, the seat of the soul, it is the awakening of the soul that happens through this, and they tell us that the pineal gland can be opened, and that when it does, we have this opening of the eye and we have this whole ascension experience take place, where we become a light being who now has really cool things like telekinesis, levitation, telepathy, the knowledge of all your past lives, the ability to walk in between the world of the living and the dead, right? Well, how do we get to this fourth density? Apparently, our solar system is drifting into a region of the cosmos where its own celestial intelligence structures it so that we go into this next level of awareness. Okay, We're structured through galactic space. We move through galactic space. There's greater energy in that space. The energy activates our solar system, activates interplanetary climate change, which we're seeing, and it activates the perceptions of the soul. As we become aware of fourth density energy more and more, this is the energy, according to the law of one, that causes thoughts to become things. So one of the examples they give is cancer. They say the reason why people are getting cancer now in the 20th century and they didn't get it so much before then is because now your thoughts are able to manifest in your body as the growth of tissue. So anger, according to the law of one, manifests as the growth of unwanted tumor cells. And this is part of the soul's journey. Because remember, the goal is forgiveness, so you don't stay on this wheel. 
But if you stay angry, your body will eventually kill you. The nature itself is designed to remove hateful elements. Nature itself is designed to remove anger, sadness, depression, fear. Sometimes it does this through death. That's one of the things the Law of One talks about. It's a very interesting thing where they begin to describe the human being as a single consciousness that is the earth. Because we are on earth and the earth is alive and the earth has its own sentience, the earth's mind, if you will, the earth's consciousness, the earth's personality is not something else. It is the function of the people on the planet. The earth's consciousness is a, if you will, Borg-like mass mind of humans, but it's not evil like the Borg. It's actually good, and it's compassionate. So as the fourth density energy comes in in waves, we get greater revelations of truth, and we get to see the negativity for what it really is. So 1936, being a surge of fourth density energy, correlates precisely with the arrival of Hitler on the world stage and a level of bizarre, draconian government chicanery unlike anything we've ever seen before in our lives. And then, of course, the horror of what ended up happening to these people and how a country was able to take a particular subset of their population, in this case Hebrews, and turn them into evil enemies that people actually agreed with. In other words, what they did was to blame the desperate economic failure of Germany on a certain particular demographic, which it was not related to that at all. And then by getting everyone angry at this particular group of individuals to say, these people are the reason why your life sucks. These people, we need to take care of them. We need to take care of these people. We need to send them off to a camp. Australia, sound familiar? And they're getting gassed. I mean, I don't know if it's real, you know, it's not Zyklon, but it's like, it's tear gas or something like that. You know, there was that video leaked recently. I, by the way, I'm so sorry if you live in Australia. Now, I will say this. In the beginning, this thing that everybody's getting, there was a lot of talk, as I've said before, a lot of people in, in this, if you will, conspiracy community believing that this is somehow going to destroy your life automatically, even if you take only one or two. However, I don't believe that's what's really going on. There appears to be a lot of immunotherapies that will be possible to be implemented. And I don't believe that it's a sentence. Uh, however, if you, don't, if you don't have to, if you're not forced to, absolutely don't do it. That's my opinion. And I'm entitled to my opinion. Apparently I am. Maybe they don't think I am. <laughs> They're not entitled to your comments, I guess. So this could be the last show I do, and that's okay. I'm, I want to talk to you honestly about this. I don't want to be going through a layer of nonsense, all right? I have done the research, I've done the homework, and there's an incredible amount of research out there, but you have to make that jump away from the plantation, away from the familiar places that you're used to going, like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Okay, if you can do that, if you can branch out a little bit, you might find that there's a lot of stuff out there. For example, a recent study from the CDC itself actually just said that there's an 83% seropositive thing already going on, which means 83% of people have some form of immunity already. And guess what you need for herd? 80%. We're 3% above herd already. There's no reason for any of this stuff. Natural immunity, they're, they're trying to change science and act like it's... Oh, I, I shouldn't talk about all this stuff. You know what? We're going to lose the channel. Anyway, you know about all this. You wouldn't be watching me if you didn't know about all this. So... Um, I got it. I got it. Thank you. We're trying to do a bunch of stuff here. We got all these things going on. So uh, let's now go back to the slide, and I'm going to finish reading you this, this prophecy because it's very relevant to what's going on now. Indeed, as we have already said, it is precisely the focus of experience that these New World Order individuals are now going through that will give them so much more to lose when the final steps into the basement are then made, which again is happening now, and a new agreement is reached in terms of international finance. That has not happened yet. So this was a prophecy I got again in 1999, folks. A new agreement will be reached in terms of international finance. So we have a very interesting thing going on here because it looks really bad. It looks like it's never been worse. 
But yet you're like, well, where's David? If we're all about to die, why hasn't he been doing videos? Because I'm totally confident. I'm not worried. I am not worried about what's going on. It is mathematically impossible for the cabal to hold power now. It is impossible. Simple physics. When so many people know about something, there are too many nonlinear dynamics involved in how those people will prevent this from going any farther. So if you are not getting what I'm telling you, let me say this very clearly. I was just getting this telepathically, hiking in the woods the other day. We are at the end of the war. This is not like some point in the middle. It's not even some point close to the end. It's the end. This is the big finale. Okay, this is the final steps into the basement. Whatever is going on right now, to me, very clearly, is leading towards arrests. I do not believe that this is going to go on much longer, and I do believe that all of the different parties involved are going to be held accountable, and that there are going to be trials. And I've been saying this since 2009 from briefings that I've been getting from military insiders, and my readings have been saying this since 1999. So let's go back and read some more from this 99 prophecy. So the final steps into the basement are then made, and a new agreement reached in terms of international finance. If you can think in terms deeper than those portrayed in the media, which obviously is going to be a very important thing as we go into the basement, the final steps you will see that there are indeed some serious thugs on the loose here. When we speak of their plans of world domination, we are speaking of something they do believe can and will be accomplished. We are here to tell you that just the opposite is going to happen. In their striving and quest for power, they will lose all that they had already gained and gain nothing new. Let me just point this out. This is another example of what happens when you're not listening to the words. Because I should have said striving. If I was trying to edit the grammar consciously, I would have. But I heard the word strive. I didn't get the I-N-G. So I essentially translated it incorrectly. So that's why it says in their strive and quest for power. But that just shows, again, I wasn't even listening to anything. In their striving and quest for power, they will lose all that they had already gained and gain nothing new. Well, this sounds very, very important right now. Because that doesn't look like the way it's going, does it? However, in the midst of all these calamities, the brokers and stock persons will begin to see a new form of commerce taking hold. They will not need to make money anymore as the credit is up. The point is that when you begin storing your money, quote-unquote, in order to become more ascension compatible, you are indeed preparing yourself for the ultimate ride of your life, and there's nothing more important than that. The Orion entities, this is how they describe in the Law of One, they do talk about the negatives, that there's an extraterrestrial group from Orion that's controlling them, and I believe that too. The Orion entities continue to struggle a bit longer with their plans of world domination, and you should not fear this. If you have stocks, now would be a good time to sell. And I think that's happening right now. I would totally agree. That is our expert advice. Sell them, get rid of them now before this happens. We are not talking about something that is far away either, and they probably knew I would be reading this today, or somewhere around now. Please think about this and know that if you have certain decisions that you can make, you are still in control. What decisions might you be able to make about your own health right now that would keep you in control? What decisions might you lose your job if you make? They're encouraging you to keep your control and keep the control of your decisions. And you'll see when I read the Law of One quote why I believe that the beings already knew all this stuff was going to be happening. Now the next line. The stocks will be devalued so much as to appear to be utter nonsense. You have my word on that one. That has not happened yet, but it appears that it will, and probably soon. We are sorry to admit such a grandiose conspiracy to you in these readings. Right? And look at what's happening now. But the facts are facts, and we need to talk about them. Again, it is our expert advice that a very substantial market correction is looming in the very near future of your limiting, uh, linear time. And so we impress these readings through David as a means of shaving off the excess hair you may still have on your face in order to have you fully washed up and prepared for ascension. Well, it's kind of gender-specific, but whatever. We are sorry that this explicit content brings messages of fear or concern, but it is our greatest desire for you to navigate through all of these changes in their multi-layered forms without any sense of panic. And as if that wasn't enough, 
It says here, as I settled into my sixth month in the torture department, I received a prophecy that a coup over the military industrial complex would take place in the aftermath of this economic collapse. None of this made sense back then, right? But now it does. Widespread paranoia about FEMA camps and martial law will not come to pass. Well, some of it already is. But it's obviously what they're telling us is it's not going to go that far. And I believe that. I, the pushback is so heavy. I'm kind of amazed that Australia is doing what they're doing at all. Okay, so October 5th, 1999, 8.41 a.m. And here's the link, and you can look it up when it was published. Once you start binding the loose bits and pieces together, you can see how all this is leading towards something like a coup over the military-industrial complex and its stranglehold over the story regarding UFOs. And all this stuff is coming out now. The government is disclosing that UFOs really exist. There does appear to be a coup against the military-industrial complex going on, and I call it the Alliance, and I've been talking about it for years, and it has to do with the posts and all kinds of interesting things. Back to the slide. We are not about to issue a blanket condemnation of government as a whole. However, what we do see is that government is in for a massive cleaning. Well, that's what's happening now, right? The audits, all that, it's there. There are some whose strength will benefit from this, but at first it will be interpreted as chaos and disorder. That's the phase we're in right now. You yourself, the reader of these words, do have the opportunity to choose not to behave in such a manner at the time that this guidance is given. We are not talking about FNC camps that will be created and the like. Go, please watch the show if, you, if you're listening to this audio. That's what You'll see what I'm saying. It's about Germany and those camps. No, rather what we are discussing is the systematic breakdown of existing orders in order to make way for changes that will result. The idea of this transformation of your society is indeed all-encompassing. We are not talking about making one simple geographic realignment or one simple raise in vibration your people the way that people are thinking. We have been guided through this formula every step of the way in these readings and elsewhere. We now know what to expect and how we will get there. In 1999, they were saying this. And so for the thinking person, the question becomes this. What do I do when I eventually want to re-sculpt society to the way that it should be? We advocate that you take some serious time in contemplation of these matters. And then here's another one that I would like to read. They are clearly telling us the economic collapse that hadn't happened yet when I wrote this will create an incredible spiritual growth opportunity. The value of the dollar will be reduced. That's probably an understatement, right? And the economies are going to boom and collapse simultaneously. Indeed, it is this conjunction of forces that precludes the opportunities for the most intense spiritual growth on this planet. You, like everyone else, will go through this experience. It is a question of how and whether you choose to face it or deny it that will determine the course of your future actions. And last but not least, the rescue squad is coming. Look at this. The financial concerns should not worry you, as all is part of a greater plan in this case. The rescue squad is coming, and we are pleased to say that. So when it actually does start happening, which is what's happening now, it is what's happening now, you can rest assured that all will be taken care of. Don't allow yourself to be deluded into thinking that the events unfolding are out of control. Quite to the contrary, they are very much being controlled and monitored, right? There we go. And that's what we can see now. We have refrained from making complete predictions about this time, the time we're in now, right? About this time, as the planetary consciousness continues to change for the positive, and it is hard to tell exactly where all of this is leading. So once you are closer to the event itself, it should be obvious, more obvious, where the trends are. And then, you know, I have many, many other readings, as we've said. So, okay, back to the camera now. Uh, let me get out of this real quick. Okay, what do we have to do? And then I gotta do this. I gotta give you guys the split screen view. Oh, here we go. Turn that off. Okay. And then Okay, so you should be able to see the slides now, is that right? Okay, great.
Yep. Okay, so let's do another camera. Let's do this one. Okay, so uh, before we go into the slides, which are going to detail what was in the Law of One from 1981, I want to start by saying that this is not part of the regular four books of the Law of One, what you're about to read, this prophecy. Some people don't believe that my readings are real or not. That's okay. Uh, but I got to tell you, it was very strange in 1999 to get all these very specific uh, statements about the idea there's going to be a global world war, there's going to be a global economic collapse, and don't worry about it. They're not going to be able to put you in the camps, even though they're going to try. It's not going to work. They, the beings, the angels, the messengers, they already see the whole thing. And a new agreement will be reached in terms of international finance, and all this technology is going to come out. Well, I didn't realize when this reading came through that I would be directly involved in the technology part, but now I very much am. And we actually just crossed another critical hurdle last week, where we now have two facilities, not one. And the second facility is much more capable of us going into mass production. Now, we're not going to do this the, the very first thing that we do, but pretty soon we want to actually start making hover cars. And if all our sources are correct, we're not going to be interfered with by the Air Force or the Navy to do this. Now, I expect that there's going to be others that will come out. I expect Boeing and Lockheed will come out with their versions, and that's fine. I, I, I don't really care if our company is Nissan or if it's the Yugo. All I'm really interested in is that we get this stuff, and I am not going to sit around and wait for other people to do this for me. Because when I try to get other people to do a job for me, Right, sweetheart, it doesn't usually work out too well. <laughs> we kind of have learned that we, if you want to get something done, you got to do it yourself. So that's what we're also doing with the technology. It's like, you know what? Based on the kind of management styles and what we're seeing out there in the world now and other people who have said that they might do this before, I think I'm qualified. So that's a very exciting thing because at the time that these prophecies came in, I had no idea that when they would be coming true, that I would already be in the process of starting this company where we're going to try to work with the military to get this out to you. Uh, because there are various things that have been invented by various individuals that are not public. And those things are radical and they transform everything about life on Earth. Medical technologies where nobody has to suffer. And these medical technologies, by the way, if you look back at the Russian experiments with pyramids, they were building pyramids out of PVC pipes and fiberglass facing up to 144 feet tall, which is huge. And then when they put even something as simple as liquid water inside the pyramid, they discovered, one, one OBGYN group in Russia discovered that they could feed one milliliter of pyramid water to babies that were born prematurely with such low birth weight that they're guaranteed to die by normal statistics. What do you think happened to the babies that were given one milliliter of water that was stored in these pyramids? That they built themselves. Every baby that got that water lived. Miraculous healings. They've, they've found that it works on all kinds of stuff. Cancer, you name it. Any, any disease, diabetes, you just get better. So even if there's no other immunotherapies available for anybody that happened to have had this done, which I know there are, the pyramid water, if we can get that going, or something equivalent thereof, and it's again, it's inexpensive. We just have to build them, and then we have to store water in them for a while. But that kind of thing could totally eliminate any type of health problem, potentially, because that's what it does. So if people are worried about their health, if they did something that they now regret, the technology that we're going to have in the future shouldn't make this a problem. And I also believe that the Alliance has the antidote because the DIA got a hand on this guy from the country in question, starting with the C, and the man in question defected and came over here, and he's been sharing all this information with them. And that information apparently includes, I'm suspecting, it includes an antidote. So I think they already have it, and they're going to release it later. And we all need to go through this first. So, yes, it's, it's very sad if anybody has, you know, passed from whatever side effects are occurring. And, and, and believe me, this is very personal. Both my wife and I have people we know in our own immediate family system who have either been severely compromised or have died. And the timing is interesting. Let's just put it that way. And a lot of us are having this. So this is a very difficult period of time on Earth. We're all going through loss, grief, sorrow, depression, 
Many people are going through substance abuse, suicidal ideation, lots of stuff that's really counterproductive for being an evolved and aware citizen of the earth. But I was told about this, folks. I was told about this in 1999. I showed you this stuff. Try to imagine what it's like being me. Try to imagine if you can, getting these prophecies. What? A global world war? That there's going to be like a collapse of the entire financial system? That stocks will be devalued so much as to be utter nonsense? That this is not going to work out in favor of the people that are trying to do it? That they're going to try to get you into these camps, but that it's not going to work? It will be blocked? And that the whole thing is part of a sacred process? So let's go back now to what I was saying. Let me go back to the same camera. <laughs> when we were uh, talking about the rise of fourth density energy and what actually happens, 1936, 1971, and then 2012 are really the only three dates they gave us. And they kind of got it closer to 2011 because they said roughly 30 years after 1981. But when the fourth density energy increases, evil becomes more obvious on Earth. So 1936, and then once the energy stays here after 36, it, it keeps on going, right? So 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, all the way up through 45 is a huge awakening to the fact that evil this intense really does exist, and it's big, and it's organized. And remember, Italy was on the side of Germany. Japan was on the side of Germany. The Axis was pretty huge. A lot of people were buying into these ideologies and actively supporting them with their soldiers and military. And the ideology was terrifying. Right? Communism is essentially the social common ownership of all things. You never, you have no hope. You can't work hard and expect to, to, to get anywhere, right? You're just going to be in the same boat as everybody else, and it's a meager subsistence living. You, you know, you, gar you guaranteed this, this, and this, but I guarantee that the kind of government houses, housing that they're going to want everybody to have as they build more of it is not going to be spacious. Ultimately, the goal is probably going to be to get everybody into micro-apartments. You have very limited space. You have very limited land, if any. You don't even own your land. And you're probably in a big, big complex building with a bunch of other people. You know. Now, granted, obviously, there are going to be people that get to keep the houses they're in, but it doesn't look good. When you look at these kind of plans and what they want, they want a standardized society. They want everybody to be thinking the same, living the same, earning the same money, living in the same places, same car, same house. It's just not the way that most people actually want to live. We like to have this idea that if we work hard, that we might get something special, that we might have the fruits of our hard work. Why should the guy who's going to drink a beer and watch Ellen, that's probably not a guy, right? <laughs> Why would the guy who does that, maybe I would, I, I would never drink beer, and I certainly don't want to watch Ellen, I'm joking. But uh, why would he... Why should he have exactly the same stuff as the guy who's working his tail off trying to make the world a better place? That's the essence of it. It takes away hope. It takes away inspiration. It takes away the desire to ever try to get anything done. Because no matter how hard you work, you're no more paid or no better off than the guy who does nothing. And that's the critical failure of socialism in this structured ideology version of it, the ideological socialism. Now, I'm, I'm, let's go over here. I'm not a big fan of this, as I've just been saying. Um, so, but what I do want to report is that, again, when the fourth density energy increases, so does the awareness of negativity on Earth. So we talked about the 1936 period. What about 1971? That's Watergate, my friend, right on the year, right on the dot, when Watergate really gets going. It stopped the Vietnam War, and it got rid of Richard Nixon, and... Ultimately, Watergate was an intimation of a much greater conspiracy that wasn't really covered. But still, the public had to contemplate this idea that the leader of the free world would cheat like a, like a dirtbag and listen to his Democrat competitors and wiretap them. And really, that's all they got him on. But a lot of people don't understand that in the hearings that resulted thereafter... Certain agencies in America that you know what they are, I'm not going to say it, the clowns or whatever, uh, the company, there were hearings being done in the Senate, and one of the things that came out that was very important was they revealed the existence of a gun that is an umbrella 
where it shoots an ice dart out the end and the ice dart goes in and it uses a shellfish toxin to give you a heart attack. It's a heart attack weapon. This was disclosed in the congressional hearings in the 1970s. My friend Pete Peterson actually invented that weapon. And, and again, that's how he knows what it is. It's a rare shellfish toxin. Uh, and it gives a heart attack, but it's undetectable. So when they told us that they have this weapon in the 1970s, that was intended to threaten all the senators. That, hey, you know, we could point our umbrella at you, and it's not just going to be rain that comes out. It's going to be, you know, we're not just going to hit you with water. What comes out is an ice dart that gives you a heart attack. So I've known about this. I've known about these people and what they're up to all my life. And I've just become more and more aware of it over the years. But I sensed that something was wrong. And I did not like watching television. In fact, uh, under certain mind-altering psychedelics that I did ingest in, in high school, uh, you know, I'm not saying that you should. In fact, most of these experiences were horrible, and I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. But when I used them as a kid, you know, 16 and it was when I started, and then I stopped when I was 19, got off of everything. Uh, but I had a lot of very bad trips. And every one of them, I seem to be aware of the earth and that the earth was dying and that we were killing it. And the earth is terrified going, why don't you people understand what you're doing to me? And why don't you do anything about it? So I remember the first thing I started to do is pick up the garbage between my house and the house where I would go to hang out with my friends and, and, and use substances. That was the beginning of where I started from these trips. I was like, well, I'll do my part however I can, starting right here. And, you know, it's probably not the wisest thing, but I, I picked up all the garbage with my bare hands and I put it in my pockets. And then at the end of the walk, I'd throw it in the garbage. And I made sure that that street was always clean. And, I dis and they told me, telepathically, I got the sense, you are the keeper of this road now. You are the keeper. Okay, keeper sounds cool. I like that. So now we're at a point where all of these things have become very frightening and very present. And so 1971, not only do you have Watergate, you have the gas crisis, where if you weren't around or you don't remember this, you could not get gas for your car. There were enormous lines of people lining up to the gas station to get fuel. It's sort of like what we saw in the southeast recently with the alleged cyber attack, which may have been something more. It was probably intentional uh, and not by any, you know, anyone else than the usual suspects, but... This was a much bigger thing that dragged on for a much longer period of time, almost like punishing the people for Watergate. You know, it's like the deep state immediately had to hit you when, when you get a little bit of freedom. So then we have the 2012. And the 2012 date is then said in the Law of One as being a much greater emanation of fourth density awareness. So as more fourth density awareness comes into Earth, you get more revelation of hidden dark truth. And so right after the year 2012, mind calendar end date again, December 21st, 2012, not barely one or two months into 2013, and all of a sudden we get Snowden and NSA disclosures and this idea that everyone is being surveilled, which now is obvious. But prior to that time, we didn't know. So do you see how the arrival of the fourth density energy could have precipitated this disclosure about the nature of of mass surveillance? Yes, that's what I think is going on. Now, in the show that I'm going to do next week, okay, so I want you to come back here, if I can stay on, next Sunday, same place, and I'm going to talk about the solar cycle, because the solar cycle has now been ramping up, and it started right at the end of the year 2019, December 2019. Very interesting timing in light of what happened as soon as the solar cycle kicked in. The sun does an 11-year cycle where it goes up and down. And what do I mean by up and down? At the low point of the cycle, there's no sunspots on the sun. It looks totally calm and relaxed like a still pond. At the peak of the sunspot cycle, it's boiling with rage. There's fire. There's just huge things called solar prominences, huge arcs of fire. And there's explosions that come out of the sun called coronal mass ejections in which massive amounts of charged particles are released. And if we get hit by one of those CMEs directly... It could take down our power grid, and it could destroy communications. So that's entirely possible. In fact, there have been a few CMEs that have happened that missed the Earth very narrowly. And if they'd hit the Earth, we'd already be out of a job here. But 
in my opinion, the, the benevolent angelic forces, there are, you know, we're going to learn this, that there are plenty of other intelligent life forms out there, and some of them are really interested in keeping us alive and keeping us safe on Earth. Those are the ones that we want to talk to, right? So when we have this kind of overview of where we are now and the fourth density energy kicking in, and then we look at 2012, Snowden, yeah. So now that the sunspot cycle is ramping up, this is correlated with yet more fourth density energy coming in. And so right now, it would appear that we are peaking with fourth density energy because the entire planet is now becoming aware of this entrenched evil stuff. Remember, my readings in 1999 said, we now know exactly what's going to happen, we know how it's going to work out, and, and, we, and we're going to guarantee a positive outcome. They're basically guaranteeing us this thing's going to work out. Now, that, of course, is related to my credibility and whether you believe me or not. But even if you don't want to believe me, the original Law of One series, which was 18 years earlier to when I got my contact, which, again, came after reading the Law of One and tuning with the Law of One, my contact told me that it was the same source as the Law of One. Now, some people believe that, some people don't. I personally think it is true. But it's not the same way that they did it through the Law of One. It was more of a filtration system through me. So it's not as clean, it's not as accurate, it's not as precise. In fact, I've tended to really undervalue my own readings versus the Law of One. I, I tend to put the Law of One on a much higher pedestal. And it's only recently that I've been getting dreams where they're saying, would you please start comparing your work to the Law of One more often? Because we did continue the message with you and we want people to know that. Okay. But I want you to see now what they were saying in 1981 about what's going to happen at the end of the cycle. Because, again, this was redacted by LNL Research, the people who did the Law of One. So they, let's go over to this camera. They did not want you to read this. And I lived with them for three years, you know, well, two years in their house and then one year on their land. Uh, so basically, I got to talk to them, Jim and Carla, the, the people who did the Law of One who were still alive. Don is dead, but Jim and Carla are still here. Or Carla is no longer with us now, but at the time she was. So I got to go hang out with them. I got to see how they tick, figure out what's this all about. And I said, well, why did you guys withhold some of this stuff from the first four books of the Law of One? Because, you know, the source wanted to do it. You think you I mean, I didn't get this personal with them. I'm like, well, why would you try to outthink the source? And they said, well, you know, some of these prophecies were very disturbing and upsetting, and we weren't sure if they were really true, and they're terrifying. So we didn't feel like that should be in the work because it seems like it's just going to set the wrong message and scare people. Well, that's fair. You know, this, this idea of a global takeover of the world, you know, is very frightening. And the, the prophecy that's the main subject of today's uh, video is very frightening. Okay, I'm going to read it to you. And you're probably not going to like it. But if you read it carefully, it describes everything that is happening right now. And again, 18 years later, the same source is alleging that they were able to get a, a clear connection through me. And I guess 96 through 2000 is when I really was at my peak. Uh, after that, my life started to get so crazy going online, being a public figure, that I actually don't trust myself right now to do good work because I'm under so much stress and anger and, and fear about various things that happen. I'm, fear usually not so much. I'm not a very fearful person, but I do get a lot of stress and I definitely get angry. So those are personality distortions that can very negatively affect your ability to do this work. So because the world itself isn't really peaceful enough right now, I don't know if my mind at age whatever I am, 48, is going to work as well doing this as it would when I was, you know, a, a beatifically ignorant kid living in the loft of a barn which is when all this stuff came through. I was in a barn, okay? So I had no idea if it was going to be true. They didn't know if the law of one stuff was going to be true, but they said, wow, this one passage is really disturbing. Let's take it out of the book. Then in 1999, I think they had an attack of conscience, and they said, well, if you want to see this stuff, we'll put it in book five. And so you can read these disturbing things that they said that we decided to withhold, in book five. Well, now you can go to lawofone.info, and it's very difficult to find this, but, you know, that's the website, lawofone, L-A-W-O-F-O-N-E dot I-N-F-O. 
If you go to that website, you can read the whole darn thing for free. It's all there. And you can do keyword searches, which I use constantly. In fact, my, my ally, Bruce Perrett, who went by the insider name Daniel, he actually built that website originally. And he was the guy that claims to have worked at Montauk, where they reverse engineered a seat from a UFO that crashed. And they were able to get a trained psychic to build portals with his mind. That if you think about a particular place, the chair will actually create a portal that will take you to that place, and then you could just fly through it. And that's how apparently UFO navigation works. They have a little cube. They hold on to it. They think about where they want to go. They see it in the cube. They, they make a decision to say yes. A wormhole opens up in front of your ship, and then you go there. And apparently it not only works in space, it works in time. So once you get space travel, you get time travel pretty much right away because negating gravity also does really strange things to time. So as soon as you create certain types of anti-gravity, there, there's all weird time distortions, temporal effects, and it doesn't appear that you can, only can go forward in time like Einstein argued. It does appear that time is three-dimensional, as Law of One argues extensively. And so when you get into this three-dimensional arena, you can travel backwards or forwards. And you might be altering probability vortexes and all this kind of stuff and causing a lot of trouble. So time travel is a bad idea. It's not something you should normally do. The higher beings are only really using it for very indirect communication with us, mostly through dreams, visions, synchronicity. If you start seeing, for example, 333 or 1111 on the clock all the time, 1212, 111, whatever the heck it is, if you're getting this weird pattern that keeps showing up or these strange things are happening that are inexplicable, except by like some type of greater cause and effect system that's related to consciousness, that means these beings are trying to contact you. And the law of one actually says that the being that's trying to contact you is yourself from millions of years in the future when you're in sixth density. That's your higher self. That's the part of you that reaches back in time to give you dreams and look at you now because it wants you to get to where you are over here faster. It's like an accordion. Instead of only having a certain number of notches on the accordion and this amount of length between the notches, these are the lessons you need to learn. If you can fold the accordion up like this, you still go through all the lessons, but it takes less time. Okay, so we're going to go back to the slide again, and uh, this is now going to be seen as part 12 in my Global Very Acrimonious Divorce series, okay, which I've been doing for a long time. Now remember, this next slide here, is this going to work? Am I going to be allowed to? Okay, hold on, i got to turn it on. This is a funny little remote. Okay, so this is the Global Very Acrimonious Divorce. We talked about this stunning law of one prophecy, but we haven't actually seen it yet. And uh, what is going on here? Hold on. Okay, so it seems hard to believe that this, that this came out back in April, right? Because all this stuff happened in January. Now we're in, we're in uh, August. September now. And so you, you already had me read through this. Fires, shootings, murders, kidnapping, earthquakes, riots, aliens from Mars, flat tire. And there's only one thing to keep your eyes on in the midst of all this. And this has become a much more pressing issue now. And it's like, you guys, are you ever going to release the results? <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of you are thinking that. Well, what they've said is that every time that they tease that they're going to do it, the enemy is forced to expend ammunition. So they have to do something, they have to set something up, they have to do something crazy, try to fight back, and they keep losing ammunition, quote-unquote, in the process. So anything that you hear about when it's going to happen is probably false, and they're going to keep doing this to keep flushing out more of the ammunition. So it could go on for months. I have no idea. I'm being honest, okay? I don't think it's going to take that long, but it's very obvious that we are at a critical, poignant moment. If you don't think that this therapy that everyone is being offered, this medical therapy, if you don't think it's good, well, I mean, it's being forced. And so now it's becoming something that everybody's got to deal with. And if your opinion of it is bad, then you're probably having a very bad attitude and you're probably having a lot of depression, anger, sorrow, crying, all that kind of stuff. And I totally understand, okay? But now I want to read you from... Uh, 
Boy, that's weird. So my clicker actually is not... What is going on here? Hold on. Is this ever going to work right? Let's see. Okay. So, now it appears that it's actually not doing that. It's a very mysterious problem I've never seen before in my whole career, but whatever, that happens. Okay, so the, the big prophecy, the reason why you're here, and we're now at 529 local time for me, so I've been going for 90 minutes already. I wanted to keep this to two, two and a half hours. I think we can do it. Two and a half is reasonable. I'm not going to go too much more in that, because frankly, I don't want to. <laughs> so there you go. Sorry, you, you wanted five hours. It's not going to happen today. Anyway, session 65, August 8th, 1981, is the critical thing. And I want to frame this by giving us the big picture first. So, this is going to set up the stage for everything that comes afterwards. My God, this remote does not work. It does not work. Okay, that's very, very sad. But I'm going to have to switch with my fingers on the, on the keyboard. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. It's a very, very strange computer problem, the likes of which I've never seen. But that's what always happens. <laughs> okay, so now I have to switch with my fingers. It's really annoying. Okay, so he says, uh, I have the impression that in the near future, the seeking will increase, spiritual seeking. This is the main thing they're concerned about, these higher beings, by many who are now incarnated in the physical on this planet. And they say, you know, the generalities of expression can never be completely correct. However, we may note that when faced with a hole in the curtain, an entity's eyes may well peer for the first time through the window beyond. This tendency is probable given the possibility probability of vortices active within your space-time and time-space continuum at this nexus. Okay. When faced with a hole in the curtain, an entity's eyes may well peer for the first time through the window of beyond. The hole in the curtain, folks, is exactly what's happening to us right now. The hole in the curtain is the Great Awakening. It is the process we're going through right now. It is the unveiling of negativity on a global scale, a shockingly integrated corporate, vertically integrated structure that's got social media, media, corporations, military, and government all in lockstep. And they're all working together for what now appears to be a very unpleasant agenda that involves reduction of how many people are here. At least this is what everybody's thinking, right? Now, whether it's true or not, you know, I'm not arguing that at this point. I'm just saying that this is, obviously, by all the things that we're seeing, the masses of people gathering in many, many countries around the world, how huge those are, this is not going to go away. And this is what people feel. And this is, people are looking at evidence and they're, they're coming up with their own conclusions and they're not being told what to think. So what they say is the hole in the curtain causes the entity to peer through the window beyond for the first time, right? What does that really mean? That means that as people on Earth right now, many of them for the very first time, I've been prepared for this, again, they were preparing me for this in 1999, right? They were giving me the statements of what was going to happen and that it would be okay in 1999. But here we are now, and many people are only now seeing what the fourth density energy reveals, which is the hidden negativity on Earth. Why does it do this? Because the negativity cannot last in the presence of fourth density. It's like the idea of throwing an ice cube on a sidewalk in the middle of the summer in the hottest day of the year. How long do you think that ice cube is going to last? How long do you think negativity lasts in the presence of light? Shadow is only caused by an absence of light. If you throw on full spectrum light in all directions, there's no shadow anymore. Nothing has the ability to cast a shadow because the light is everywhere. That's basically what fourth density is. It blows open the future. It blows open the realization of why life on Earth has sucked so much, why we've had such a crappy economy, why we're still driving these vehicles that are almost no different than trains from the early 1800s. It's, it's essentially a locomotive but the big technological breakthrough is we figured out how to put rubber on the tires so we don't have to go on a rail. And then what about the fuel? Well, yeah, okay, so we kind of went from coal to gas. Wow, that's huge. Wow, it's amazing technological advancement. It's a locomotive. We're driving locomotives with rubber tires that burn gas. Nothing has changed. All of these other advancements that we have, smartphones, high technology, a little watch that has everything you need inside of it, and we can't figure out how to build something better than a locomotive with rubber wheels? It's ridiculous. 
And that's because the people who are profiting off of the oil system set it all up at the beginning of the 20th century, and they didn't come up with any better business model, so they just kept using it. They don't want you to stop using this model because their business relies upon it for profit. If I'm talking about things like, you know, free energy, you don't need to pay for that. If the, the buzzword in the military, as I learned, is power plants. So when you hear the word power plants, that actually means something that releases a large amount of energy uh, and it's not going to be uh, expensive. You know, it's in fact free or very, very inexpensive. So the only real reason why all this stuff has been held back is that they want us to suffer. They want us to be miserable. They want us to be under control. And they want us to be constantly traumatized. One of the greatest things that, that I have learned over the years is how the negative works. What is the strategy of the negative? The strategy of the negative I call stacking. And this is how most people get attacked by the negative. The negative has learned that it doesn't need to hit you with one really, really bad crisis, like a car crash. You don't need to actually crash your car to have a total meltdown. All that needs to happen is a combination of really awful stress out in the world, and there's plenty of that right now, so you could go crazy just by reading the news. It's cognitive dissonance, but also you have these bad things going on in your own life. And so if crisis number one, two, three, and four, betrayal number one, two, three, and four all kind of collide in on you at the same time, while these negative things are also happening in the world, the effect on your psyche is that you feel totally overwhelmed and then you go into a dissociative state. Now, I believe that everyone disassociates and this is what the cabal is trying to get you to do. Because when you disassociate, you go into a fight or flight response. And we've learned a lot about this in psychology. We've learned that in fight or flight, you only use the core of your brain. You only use the reptilian brain. The rest of your brain when people are in fight or flight, trauma, PTSD type of condition. None of your brain is functioning. Your brain does not work. You are a child. You are a child who is terrified. And you're a child who either is going to fight or run. But those are your decisions. And that's the only thing you're going to focus on. You do not have the capacity to analyze information. You do not have the capacity for critical thinking. And so... People don't understand that you can have the equivalent of a separate identity that pops up in you when you are traumatized. And in this identity, you're in fight or flight. And in this identity, you only use the core of, reptilian core of your brain. You literally do not have access to the rest of your brain. You can't think. So wouldn't it be interesting if you were a globalist elite and you could make people that way? Keep them in the center of their brain. Keep the rest of their brain from functioning so that they don't have the ability to critically think, they don't have the ability to analyze what you're doing, and they don't have the ability to really even understand it. That's what they're trying to do. And so a psychopath is a person who does have the use of most of their brain, but they don't have the frontal lobes. So bear in mind that when a psychopath is torturing you, and this a psychopath is basically just defined, it's not like Hannibal Lecter, they don't, it's not a murderer. A psychopath in a psychological definition is a person who has no compassion for you. They just want to manipulate you, they want to control you, they want to abuse you. That's what they're here for, that's what they're interested in. So if that's what you're dealing with, and that kind of person is out there, they do not use the frontal lobes of their brain. So psychopaths, they found on these MRIs, the frontal lobes are gone. But remember, if the psychopath can trick you into going into your trauma body, your pain body, as some have called it, now you only have access to the core. So they have a lot more brain power available to them than you do because the frontal lobes being offline means that they can still think and analyze and, and strategize while you are in this traumatized state where you can't really think clearly at all. And because they don't have the frontal lobes, the compassion, you know, whether they're hurting your feelings, that has no relevance for them. And so a certain percentage of our population are psychopaths, traditionally said to be 4% men, 2% women. 
which means theoretically a man is twice as likely to be a psychopath as a woman. But still, 4 to 2% is not that much. However, when these people organize and they form social structures and they form governments and they form corporations, it's a big problem because they all start thinking the same way. And wouldn't you know that if you're in a ceremony, and I'm going to be very, very careful about how I say this, if you're in a ceremony with other people and bad things are happening, you go into a programmable hypnotic state because the, the, the horror of what you're seeing is so incredibly huge that it is exactly the equivalent of tripping. If you're in a very, very horrible ceremony, you are having a psychedelic experience because you're so traumatized by simply seeing this. And imagine what would happen with those people in the room as they look each other in the eye while they're doing these horrible things. The bonding that occurs between those individuals because they've been bonded by a shared trauma experience that's very horrific. That bonding leads to loyalty, just like it does with soldiers in the military. They're loyal to each other because they go through the same thing. And the way that they justify it is they say, we're the elite. We're the special ones. We're the cool ones. You know, you all suck, but we're amazing. And we're better than you, and so we want to get rid of you because we don't like you. That's what's going on. And we need to deal with this. You cannot be the ostrich. I used to try to teach people about the deep state, and they'd say, David, you're creating so much negativity, I just don't want to be involved. I'm out of here. I'm never going to go to your website again. I've had lots and lots and lots of those emails. Well, I'm not creating the earth changes, and I'm not creating the Illuminati. I'm not creating evil. You don't have to. We're, the, the earth is a collective mind, and it's collectively experiencing what we as a collective 7.6 or whatever billion people create. It's not up to you. You can help steer the ship, but you got to go through everybody's karma. We're all on the ship together, and we got to go through planetary karma, planetary alleviation. So in this law of one quote, what they're saying is that once you start to realize that the whole darn thing is rigged up, that everything that you've been told your whole life is a lie, that you're not as free as you thought you were, you're not as safe as you thought you were, they don't care about you. They don't want you to be happy. They don't want you to have abundance. They don't want to release new technology. They don't want the financial system to get better. They don't want you to have access to amazing healing devices at all. They want you weak. They want you tired. They want you sick. And they want you dying or dead. Because then it's more easy to run this planet. And they certainly don't want you to realize that there's beings that have a lot more authority than they do just in terms of their level of technology and spiritual expertise. They want to be gods. They think they are gods. They don't want to be competing with any other gods. They want to be the god. They want to be that thing. So if you, if you can vibe in to the reality of what great spiritual teachers like Jesus told us over the years, why would you think that all that stuff got negated? Why would you think that, oh, well, Jesus was wrong. Yeah, it's not really going to work out. We're all going to die. Jesus was wrong. It's, <laughs> it's stupid. There's 35 different ancient prophecies all over the world, and they all say the same thing. They all say that the world's going to go through a horrible hell process, but that it turns into an enlightenment experience, and that we're okay. Everybody says this. It's not unique to Christianity at all. It's actually a very common, widespread belief system. That's just truth. I'm just laying it out for you as the truth. So let's go back to the slide. I want you to read more of this now. Okay, so this is session 65, question 6, and now we're really getting into where this is about to drop. So as we're progressing into this fourth density, the coming changes, not only in the physical third density planet due to the heating effect, that's the earth changes, global warming, they talk about that being the result of us resisting fourth density. If we didn't, the planet wouldn't be heating up so much. And sure enough, have you noticed that, like, glacier ice is returning in the Arctic. You can sneeze if you want to. Uh, she goes like, <sighs> I'm like, oh, please, just let it go. <laughs> it's okay. We don't care if you sneeze. You're doing a great job switching. Thank you. So wouldn't it make sense that all of this, that, that, that this alleviation of, of the earth changes right now is because more people are waking up? 
and therefore the fourth density energy is not being interrupted. They actually said there's a possibility that we might not have Earth changes as we go through fourth density. We might not get the dreaded pole shift, tsunami, all that kind of stuff. And it relies on us. It relies on you. Anytime that you start deferring your authority and think that, well, there's nothing I can do. What could I do? I'm just one person. You know how much I've heard this over the years? Well, I'm just one person. I channeled this stuff in a barn. Now it's true. What is one person? One person is incredible. One person is the divine embodied in human form with full access to cosmic consciousness in potential as you work through your trauma and your healing. And you can learn to go through suffering without regressing into this reptilian-brained child who's always angry or is running away because it's fight or flight, one or the other. You're only going to do one of two things. Although now the research says there's freeze too. Fight, flight, and freeze. And I think a lot of people are in freeze. But they're just starting to go into, into fight. So I had a dream not too long ago where I was working on my thing with the hover cars and the anti-gravity and the power plants. And I'm at a computer on a battlefield working on this stuff. And then the people were represented by people literally just jumping over my shoulders and they're just running onto the battlefield. And they've never done this before. They've never been political. They've never gone public. And now they're doing it. And that is happening. And just the fact that so many people are aware of what's going on now, that awareness itself is incredibly astonishing. I never thought that the stuff that I was talking about would be so widely seen by so many different people. And yet here we are today, and it's just, it's so obvious to everyone. And that's incredible. So the law of one makes it very clear that this is not going to go bad that this is a divinely ordained process, that it's guided and it's guarded. So again, if you're thinking it's all over, it's doom and gloom, I don't know why David told me it was going to be okay, it's all going down the crapper. No, 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 no. I very much believe that this is an intensely well-organized global initiation allowed to exist and to some degree structured and influenced by higher forces, by angelic beings. They will not allow the higher beings will not allow certain things to happen. They will not allow nuclear war to happen, for example. They just won't. And there's hundreds of times that we tried, and they won't let it happen. So let's go back to the slide now. Uh, so he says, uh, the heating effect, but also other changes that herald fourth density, such as the ability to perform paranormal activity. I'm assuming that both of these are also and will act as a catalyst to create greater seeking. Is this correct? And they say this is partially correct. The paranormal events occurring are not designed to increase seeking, but are manifestations of those whose vibratory configuration enables these entities to contact the gateway to intelligent infinity. So there they're talking about the idea that as fourth density is getting ready to happen on Earth, people come in who already have these abilities to varying degrees activated. And this is where you get things like people bending spoons with their mind, uh, poltergeist activity, levitation, all kinds of weird stuff that various uh, people have had happen, either consciously or unconsciously. They say this is all because new people are coming in with the fourth density body partially activated, and when they have that, they can do these things. So the entities capable of paranormal service may determine to be of such service on a conscious level. This, however, is a function of the entity and its free will and not the paranormal ability. Okay, so that's a double of that slide. Sorry about that. Now, this is the next part. The correct portion of your statements is the greater opportunity for service due to the many changes which will offer many challenges, difficulties, and seeming distresses within your illusion. Now, before I even cut off of this, just keep looking at this for a second. Within your illusion, seeming distresses. What do you mean seeming? What they're talking about right here in the context of what they're about to say, is exactly what's happening to us right now. That's right. They're, they're talking about seeming distresses, and they're talking about life on Earth being an illusion. What the heck does that mean? Even if somebody dies, in the law of one terms, it's, it's just part of the process of being a soul. We, we're so unenlightened on Earth in general as a whole, as a planet, 
that many people believe that death is the end, that you're not going to continue to exist. You're not going to have sentience. You're not going to be aware anymore. Your, your whole, the whole beautiful note of the creation that is you and your mind and your personality could be lost. And you sink into this great black abyss when you die and nothing exists and you just forgot that there ever was a universe. It's like it never even happened. My grandparents on my father's side definitely believed this. They certainly believed that when they died that it all goes back to nothing. And this is why we're so afraid of death and why we're so terrified that something might kill us because the idea is death is the end. Death is the end of awareness. Death is the end of consciousness. Death is the end of thinking and feeling and being. It's not true. You're just as alive as a soul as you are in a physical body, and your soul is just as capable of giving you a new physical body and finding new parents to birth your sorry ass. <laughs> your soul is totally capable of doing that, and your soul also is able to impregnate the, the facial features of the soul onto your face, which is why research has proven that when people reincarnate, they look the same as who they were before. Dr. Ian Stevenson studied over 3,000 children, most of them in the Middle East, in a culture where they believe in reincarnation, and they remember their past lives with astonishing efficacy. Actionable data is recovered in these 3,000 cases that lead to forensic proof that this person is remembering the lifetime of someone else. And then when you compare the lifetime they're remembering to who they are now, and you look at their faces, they're almost identical. And in fact, uh, those who have followed in Dr. Ian Stevenson's footsteps have now used police face matching software. And it turns out that if you committed a crime in your past life, such as murder, the face match is usually so good that you could still be found guilty of it in your subsequent incarnation. Based on the criteria the police use of how much of a face match there is, you could be found guilty for something you did in another lifetime. Hypothetically. Now, I don't want to create that law at all. That would be horrible, right? But it already exists and it's called karma. So if you're getting your ass kicked and you have no idea why your life sucks so much, it's probably because you were a real jerk in another lifetime. And so you're like, well, I don't understand, man, because I'm doing everything right. I'm doing everything right. I'm so nice and I'm friendly and people just keep hurting me. Oh. Get over it. Stop complaining. Your life sucks. Everybody's life sucks right now. It sucks hard. That's the point. It's supposed to suck really hard. That's if, if your life sucks, then you're exactly where I want you to be right now. Okay, so you're doing fine. If your life is really terrible, you've never been more sad, you've never been more angry, you've never been more afraid, and you've never been more sick to your stomach, you're on the David Wilcock timeline. This is what we told you was going to happen for 20 years. We told you this was going to happen. And now here we are. And now you're like, I don't know if I believe this. Well, dude, I told you in 99. I put it up on my website in 99. You can go look. It's there. The military-industrial complex will be defeated and turned into a new financial system that releases advanced technology. And that's a lot nicer and really represents force density. I mean, all the crazy stuff that's happening on Earth now, we may not even need Earth changes. This may be enough to kickstart force density and start... You know, because as more and more of us awaken, all of a sudden you're going to get more synchronicity, more telepathy, you're going to become more psychic, you're going to have better dreams, you're going to remember them better. Well, maybe not right now because it's so stressful. I'm not remembering my dreams at all right now, but hardly at all. I mean, I get a little bit, but it's been very intense. The world is very intense. That's the way it's supposed to be. It's a global initiation. It's a global dark night of the soul, and it's supposed to be horrible. So don't feel sorry for yourself when your life is horrible. It's intended to be that way. Because right now, we're at the end of the cycle, and you are being held accountable for not only this lifetime, according to what these beings tell us, you're accountable for all your lifetimes. So you might have, you might have violated someone. You might have really badly violated someone in their lifetime, which is a normal thing. You're in an army. You conquer a neighboring land. What are you going to do? You're going to rape and pillage. Right? That's just what armies used to do. All of us probably have done that at some point in the past. All of us have probably done horrible things to other people in the past, and now we got to pay for it. The Casey readings describe people laughing about little girls getting the side of their body eaten out by a lion in the Roman Colosseum. They were laughing as these Christians were persecuted 
2,000 years later, they reincarnate with these horrible problems in the side of their body where the girl was being eaten because they were laughing as she was dying. Okay? When you guys laugh at us, 2,000 years from now, you're still paying for laughing at David Wilcock. I hope that that's a good thought for you to have the next time you want to be a keyboard warrior. Because you got 2,000 years to turn your head and cough and find out that now you can hit that high E. <gasps> no, it's a keyboard troll, not a warrior. <laughs> well, yeah, they think they're warriors. They're really just trolls. Yeah. Keyboard jockey. You can call it whatever you want. The amount of abuse that I have taken over the years to try to tell you guys this stuff is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. But now everybody has to deal with it. So that makes me feel better, right? It's like, well, shit, now somebody else has got to deal with it besides me. That's awesome. You know, because I'm not the only one. And, and being trolled is a very good thing because being trolled gives you the opportunity to do what in psychology we would call a self-inventory. Let's go over here for a minute because this is kind of a different idea. So, four, yep. So when you're trolled, people tell you, I mean, the, the two most common things everybody said to me is, oh my God, David has an ego. And oh my God, David is making money. And I heard this for years and years and years and years. And it's like, well, I'm sorry if my confidence about my subject matter expertise comes across as ego. I'm not intending for it to, but I think some people interpret that confidence as arrogance. And so that's one of the comments I've had for so many years. It's like, well, and so many people told me, be more humble, be more humble, be more humble. It actually became very damaging because so many people said that to me that it was as if God was telling me this. And you can only go so far down that road of humility because humility means that you might not take a lot of action. A, a humble person may be a person, oh, I'm just going to chop wood and carry water. That's one kind of spiritual mission, and I'm not denying it at all, the value of those people who can be in meditation all the time and planetary service. That's very important. My life, however, is about getting things done. Just... <laughs> I got to get stuff done. That's what I'm here for. And so, yeah, I'm going to be confident because I know this stuff is true. I have no doubt of it. I mean, come on. I've had thousands of future prophecies that came true. I've had thousands of dreams, thousands of synchronicities, so many redundant proofs that there's a higher intelligence is guiding over us. I don't need to worry about it. But I'm in a human body and I'm here and we all have to go through this together as a collective. And that's you know, many of you watching this, you probably are a lot more advanced than most humans. And that's the wanderer, or what they call in the Law of One, the brothers and sisters of sorrow. These are angelic beings that volunteered to be human to lighten the load for everybody else because their vibration raises the planetary vibration. But part of that mission is that you're not allowed to remember that you're an extraterrestrial. You're born on Earth you're trying to fit in on Earth. You're trying to understand everyone, but you feel very different. You feel very alienated. People take advantage of you, and you really don't understand all the crime and the negativity and the suffering and, and, and how people could be deceptive and how they could betray you. It doesn't even make sense. Well, that's because maybe your last lifetime was in some angelic realm where everybody's a sphere of light with no body, and they're all perfectly happy and orgasmic singing together all the time. And life is awesome. And you wouldn't dream of anybody betraying you or stabbing you in the back or trying to steal your money because there is no money. And everybody creates the money they want, right? Then you come to Earth and it's like, good God, I thought I could trust this person. Look at what they said. Look at what they did. Look at how they went behind my back. It's unbelievable. And for me, it's like I realized like I, I've been under attack my entire life. I've been under attack my entire life. Kids hated me in school because I was intelligent. I'm not trying to make other people mad. I just decided to bring a book on ESB to school and read it in school or read magazines on astronomy. Well, they hated me, I guess, because, you know, when, when you think, when some people think that someone else has something that you don't, it can make you angry. So if you think somebody's smarter than you, well, he's smarter than me. I hate him. Well, he has more whatever than me. I hate him. Our friend Ben said the same thing. Our friend Ben said the same thing? Yeah, he used to bring those magazines uh, to school. Oh, yeah. He used to bring magazines to school and get bullied, right? Yep. I think you've probably been through this too. And then, and then essentially, the bad patterns that got stuck in my mind by being overweight at the time and really 
inept and unable to defend myself is what led to me in eighth grade taking martial arts. And martial arts became an enormous part of my life, and I think it's why I chose the life of a warrior, not having children and going out there and fighting, because the martial arts training, I, I went through it for five years, and uh, it trained me to really be fearless, you know, and to learn that I always have the ability within myself to defend myself and to protect myself. Uh, so, like, I don't have to worry about walking down a dark alley at night. I don't have to worry about walking through any type of neighborhood anywhere because I have the tools to defend myself if I need to, but also with that comes the confidence where you're not afraid. And so, for God's sake, folks, there's so many more of us than them. Stop being so afraid. They don't have the staff to, to lock everybody up. They don't have the staff to kill everybody. They don't. They don't have enough people. There's been way too many movies about atrocities and war and horrible things that have happened. It's inside everybody's mind. They don't want to perpetrate that. That's why you're seeing these remarkable events taking place where riot police dropping their shields walking off the job, multiple cases of this happening, which are being always stuffed down as soon as it takes place, right? You never get to see it again unless you're in these alternative platforms. That's all happening. That's real, okay? People, there's not enough people to fulfill the plan that these negative folks want to do. They just don't have the people. What they do have, however, is an incredible ability to control how you think and to manipulate the way that you perceive truth, Truth may not be true, and that's where you get the keyhole that you can start to look through and realize, wait a minute, everything I thought about life on Earth is frickin' wrong. The educational system is rigged. People are paying to get their kids into these Ivy League schools, right? That's one of the things we just learned in the last couple of years. The medical system might not be giving you things that are good for you. The media might not be giving things that are good for you. If you try to talk about certain things, you'll be completely prevented from doing so. And it goes on and on and on. And now people are really, really mad. They've gone from freeze to fight. And this is a global mass consciousness effect. And so now everybody's talking about this. And this is exactly what the higher beings designed. The entire 25,000 year cycle of life on Earth is intended for this big crisis that we're in right now to happen. I'm even going to make an audacious statement and say the only thing that really matters in your whole life is what you're doing right now. Because we're at the end. You had other times in the past to screw up, to fall off, to not get it right. Now you're either going to get it or you're not. Yeah, it's totally in the prophecies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's... <laughs> yes. Let's go, back to the, let's go back to the slide. I'll read you more of this prophecy. So it says, the correct portion of your statements is the greater opportunity for service due to the many changes which offer many challenges, difficulties, and seeming distresses within your illusion. To many who will then seek to understand, if we may use this misnomer, the reason for the malfunctioning of the physical rhythms of their planet. And then it says, moreover, there exist probability, possibility, vortices. Remember, this is August 8th, 1981 which spiral towards your bellicose actions. Bellicose means evil, warlike, destructive, right? So there are these probability vortices. Many of these vortices are not of the nuclear war, but of a less annihilatory but more lengthy so-called conventional war. But it's not conventional, and they're going to explain that it's totally not conventional. This situation, if formed in your illusion, would offer many opportunities for seeking and for service. Then he says, how would conventional warfare offer the opportunities for seeking and service? Now look at this, folks. This is the big one. You ready? The possibility probabilities exist for situations in which great portions of your continent, and this was done in America, great portions of America and the globe in general might be involved in a type of warfare which you might liken to guerrilla. So again, just to simplify that, great portions of your continent and the globe in general might be involved in a type of guerrilla warfare. I almost want to just drop the mic and be done right there because it's like, dude, wow! Great portions, let's flip back on it for a second, please. Great portions of your continent and the globe in general might be involved in a type of this warfare. 
Okay, now you'd say, well, that sounds really exciting, What is? but it's scary as hell. I mean, back when I first was reading The Law of One and I affiliated with Dr. Scott Manilker, who wrote the book on it that got me interested in it, his book was called From Elsewhere, we started talking about this. And then after 98, when book five finally came out, and we read this, and I said, good Lord, Dr. Manilker and I were talking about this prophecy and, and we said, you know, in case of emergency, break glass. Let's hope that this never comes true. If it does, I guess we'll talk about it once it does. Well, now it came true. So, like, the law of one kind of said, yeah, there might be, like, a global guerrilla warfare thing that happens where your own country, America, is all tied up in this. But they said a type of this. What I've realized is, yeah, that is totally defined by the asymmetric dynamics of rioting. And who's really doing the rioting? And what are they really doing, right? And what are they doing? They're attacking infrastructure. They're burning down cities. They're making people afraid. That's guerrilla warfare. So they're using a particular term to try to describe something that we're now seeing. And now we can unlock the prophecy. Now we can understand what they meant by global warfare. And it's pretty clear that, yeah, that comparing it to guerrilla warfare... It's a little bit, it sounds a little extreme because it's more aggressive than the way that we normally talk about, oh, well, they're riots, they're protests. No, no, no. These are like people burning things down, people doing all kinds of crazy stuff. That is warfare, and it's that type of warfare. Okay, now let's go back to the slide. So then they're going to go even further into this prophecy, and again, this, is a, this totally blows me away in light of what's happening right now. The ideal of freedom from the so-called invading force of either the controlled fascism or the equally controlled social common ownership of all things, hmm, freedom from fascism and social ownership of all things, would stimulate great quantities of contemplation upon the great polarization implicit in the contrast between freedom and control. So right here, let's just... <laughs> They're literally saying a global controlled fascism in the form of, of nonlinear guerrilla warfare that takes place all over the world and in America simultaneously. And this is what, what is it going to do? It's going to stimulate people's desire to meditate on freedom and control. Yeah, you're stimulated by that. Well, that's what the beings really want. They want you to become a person who is strong, liberated, and free. And they want you to be a person who doesn't wait for other people. Why hasn't David done a video in a month and a half? Eh. But where's your video? I'm not, I don't usually do this to you, right? But like, let's just talk about this. Don't expect me to do everything, right? I'm not the hero. I'm just one dude doing this. I'm not the planetary savior in any way, shape, or form. And please don't think that I am. Anybody that says that, I say, oh my God, no. This, I'm more like Morpheus in the Matrix, right? And you're Neo. And so my role is really to kind of make the handshake with the higher forces, hear what they have to say, present it to you, and then you go run with it and see what you can do. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get you activated because this is not something where you just sit back in the backyard waiting for the apocalypse in your lawn chair, drinking a beer and whatever else you're doing. It's much more than that. It's about individual responsibility and how have you contributed to what's going on right now? Are you being an effective member of society? Are you telling other people what's really going on? Are you being brave enough? And again, it might be nonlinear. And they even talk about the fact here that this type of controlled fascism will lead to the ability where you can't openly express your desire for freedom. Look at this. Let's go back to the slide because that's pretty interesting. Okay. So the next thing they talk about is these other weapons. And this is very, very interesting. Oops. Yeah, my slides go out right as I'm... Uh, here we go. Are they back now? Yeah. Okay. In this scenario, which is being considered by the deep state at this time-space nexus, meaning 1981, so they were already planning this back in 81, folks, and there's new evidence that's been coming out that I could maybe do later that talks about that. The idea of obliterating valuable sites and personnel is not considered to be useful. They don't want to get rid of anything, and they don't want to get rid of any valuable people. Other weapons would be used which do not destroy as your nuclear arms would. 
In this ongoing struggle, the light of freedom would burn within the mind-body-spirit complexes who are capable of such polarization. And that's a very interesting thing. First of all, other weapons would be used which do not destroy as your nuclear arms would. And they said weapons in plural, right? Well, we're getting a pretty good idea what those kind of weapons might be. It could include germs, it could include injectables, all kinds of stuff, right? And we're seeing this. We're in it now. Well, they were telling us about this in 1981, and they said weapons plural. So this is very, very fascinating. And then another thing that the Law of One talks about is many people on Earth are not even actually at a third density level. They're only at a second density or orange ray level instead of the yellow ray level of third density. They're only at orange. Now, what does this mean? This means herd mentality, crowd consciousness, and wor the worship of they, whoever they are, whatever they say. When I look at the, the older demographic, the baby boomer demographic, and I was reading next door, a common, you know, community site today, and there was a whole thing on Nextdoor about this issue of whether people are going to take this particular medical treatment or not. And what I found, and I, I decided not to use these as slides because it has people's names in it, and then they might get targeted, but my God, there were people on this public forum calling for the death of anyone that won't accept the treatment, that they are so afraid that they cannot tolerate these people being alive and having any freedom. And those people probably will not be capable of polarizing towards freedom. So let's go back to the slide. The light of freedom will burn in this struggle within those people who are capable of such polarization. So if you, if you haven't really made it into third density yet, that means that you haven't learned individuation. You haven't learned to think for yourself, make up your own mind, and discard the voice of the collective authority. Okay, that's a basic criteria for third density. Because second density animals, they listen to the collective. They listen to what they say, whoever they is, or whoever they are. Better English. Why are we not seeing how effectively everyone's been lied to? Well, a lot of people are, but man, there are some people who are still totally asleep, and it's very sad and it's very scary to read them calling for the deaths of others who refuse to get this treatment. Haven't we learned anything from World War II? Haven't we learned anything from you know, isolating a particular population whose opinions don't agree with the government and then demonizing them and, and trying to call for their mass extermination? This is not too uncommon, folks. It's the old playbook. And if you can't figure out that it's just a different name now, it's not Hebrew anymore, now it's something else, but it's a targeted group, Wow, I mean, these people are actually out there uh, significantly calling for death, imprisonment, and, 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 and the total loss of freedom for these people. And then you have the alleged leader of this country going out there, well, we're losing our patience with you. What? Who's we? And what? I mean, like... The thing that they've just done now, to me, is not about actually getting it to work, because they know it's not going to work. There's already like half of the states of America have definitively shown that they will not allow this to occur at the state government level, which they'll still try to get around that, of course. I mean, I was hearing about this. They're going to try to chop everything up into UN green zones, mandatory camps, mandatory injections, right? That's the, we've heard all this stuff. I've heard this from briefings, high-level briefings, that they're trying to get this to happen. Well, maybe we will. You never know. Let's see. <laughs> That's Jen Psaki. Oh, we never know. We might try it. <sighs> it's awful. I mean, I have to go through this. I have to watch this stuff just like you. But I guess one advantage I have is that I've seen these prophecies already. And then when these things come true, I was like, well, let's go back and look at that prophecy in the law of one about global tyranny again. See what the hell it says. And it was much more precise than I could have ever imagined. Right? So then they're actually saying... Other weapons, plural, will be used that do not create large spread damage. They just cause death. Okay? And then the light of freedom will burn within those who are capable of feeling that desire. And that's another interesting comment, is that there are people who are not capable of freedom. They're not capable of wanting to be free. They can't. They are addicted to the collective. They worship mommy and daddy in the form of 
mommy and daddy government, mommy and daddy media, mommy and daddy, they who know everything and are, are trying to run the country. They don't have your interests in mind. They don't want to help you. They don't want to keep you safe. They don't want you to be free from sickness. They don't want to reduce your symptoms. They don't give a shit about you. They don't. And they never will. They only want you to serve them. That's what psychopaths do. They want to control you. They want to manipulate you. And they will laugh in your face as they lie to you. And you try to say, well, wait a minute. Last week you said, I don't care. I don't care if I said before that we would never force this on you, that it's your body. I don't care. Now we're telling you something else. So now everybody is getting to have the gut bucket, knock down, drag out, dysfunctional relationship that really should have ended in divorce a long time ago. And why the hell aren't they, are they still together? That's what we're in right now. An abusive, dysfunctional relationship where you are the victim and the abuser, the perpetrator, is the alleged elite. And it's become a very personal story that affects each of us. Will I continue to take this job if they're going to make me do this? And many people are now saying no. Over 70% of the polling data shows that people will leave. It could be a mass walkout. And that kind of Gandhi-level peaceful protest is the only thing I'm calling for. I am not calling for violence. I will never call for violence. I would disavow violence. I do disavow violence. Don't go to these protests. Don't bring any type of weapon at all, please. If you want to go to the protests at all, if you see anything happening you'd like to get involved in, don't bring anything with you that you could get in trouble for if you get arrested. And certainly, if you see any type of violence or weird, nasty stuff starting to happen, turn and run. Get away from that area as quickly as possible. And don't fall for this false stuff where they're trying to get they're tr they're trying to cr control and create the protest right they they're telling you what day it's going to be on television oh there's going to be a protest on september so and so and you know everybody's really mad about so and so and they're all going to be out there demonstrating that's not true nobody's going to this thing who's real it's going to be completely a no show just like the other one was but what is going to happen the nonlinear stuff that the law of one was talking about that's what they're trying to do the psychopath wants to punish you for standing up for yourself. If you're in a relationship with a psychopath, the one thing you never ever want to do is stand up for yourself. Because as soon as you do, they will smash you. Right? And that's what they're trying to do right now on a global level. We are trying to stand up for ourselves and they're like, I am going to smash you. So what do they want to do? They want, the psychopath always tries to trigger you. When you're in an abusive, really, really abusive relationship, thank God I'm not in any of these kind of situations anymore, but I was before. When you're in a really abusive relationship, the other party is trying to get you to do something unethical. They're trying to get you to say something unloving. They're trying to get you to get angry. They want you to go into a tantrum. They want you to start yelling. They want you to throw something. There's certain other things that they want you to do. It's unbelievable. The stuff that I've personally experienced, the stuff that people have personally said to me, the stuff that people have personally done to me, the level of unfairness, the level of sick insanity of this abuse. I've seen it. I've experienced it. Okay, I'm a, I'm a veteran of this. What do they try to do? They try to get you so mad that you go over the edge. You lose control. Now all you have is this tiny little brain in the middle of your head, the reptilian brain. That's all that's running. Your brain is shut down. And then they have everything but the frontal lobe, so they can drastically outthink you in these, in these arguments. And you're going to lose. Because you go into dissociative state, trauma child, that's all you have. You can't think. You're fight or flight, and you're really angry. And you haven't lived in this persona long enough to, to actually like have healed that inner child so that it's not angry when it comes out. So what are they doing now on a global level? They're trying to provoke, 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 so that you're only in the middle of your brain. You can't think. You can't see through propaganda. You can't determine the truth. You can't determine whether they're being honest with you or not. But a lot of people will prefer to be abused. Because what does the abuser always do? And every person who's done this to me, this is what they do. It's so much worse. Your life is so much worse if you stand up for yourself that the lesson is just don't. Just don't stand up for yourself. Don't take that step. Don't do anything. If you don't stand up for yourself, 
then you're allowing them to do whatever they want. And so I think an abusive relationship can be a great teacher if you get the resources in yourself to get out and to cut the cords and to leave that person behind. And so that psychodynamic of a personal relationship is totally relevant to the psychodynamics of our global relationship with the elite. Because we are in a dysfunctional relationship right now with psychopaths, but you could quantify it as if it's a psychopath. And that's how the universal law seems to work, right? So archetypally, meaning the archetypes are these gestalts of consciousness that we all have to follow whether we realize it or not, the archetype that's going on right now is a very, very acrimonious divorce between the devil and God, if you really want to look at it that way, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's actually the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. And the way that it's manifesting is that we are in this relationship with a person, and I'll just quantify it as a person right for now to keep it easy, right? We are in a relationship with a person who appears to have power over us. They appear to be in control. They appear to be running the world. They appear to have control of the resources. They appear to have control of the media. They appear to have control of our money, of our health, of our ability to be alive. And they're manipulating this and they're doing it abusively. They're lying to us. They're telling us things that are only halfway true. And then they just, they just bulldoze over it. I don't care about lawsuits. I don't care if people are suing me. I don't care if I said it before. And then when, when they get questions asked to them, you see how they just dart off the stage, right? But this is happening. They keep getting these questions that they can't answer. Now, I do believe that the military from the U.S. and other countries in the world have planned for all this. I believe that everything that we're seeing is precisely structured. I believe that the election was meant to go the way that it did. It was allowed to go the way that it did, despite whatever you might think. We as a collective needed to see that inauguration, we needed to see this, this new government come in, and we needed to see how bad it is, and we needed to see how awful it is. There would be no mass awakening if 45 had won again and gotten a second term. Many, 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 many people would have still disliked him. Many people would have still been addicted to that propaganda. Nothing would have ever convinced them except to actually see the earth fall apart or appear to be falling apart. That's why this was necessary. So there's a very complex plan in place. There are ongoing messages. There's ongoing massive amounts of data. And honestly, I would love to cover all this. But one of the things that you find out is that if you have a legacy gigantic following like I do, they really, really don't like that. So I am not in a position to report on many things because we have, for example... If you look at what happened in Arizona, that team that was working in Arizona, over half of them got this weird virus that we've been talking about for the last two years. Over half of them simultaneously got it. I went to an event with Corey Good, and then after the event, Corey, his wife, and the high-level insider who we met with there, they all got a very severe case of this, and our high-level insider nearly died. So now what I'm looking at is the very distinct possibility that there's some sort of spritzy thing they've got, some sort of aerosol or something like that. They could maybe spray it on their hand, spray it in the air. They spray it around you, and then you get this thing. And that's what I think happened in Arizona, and that's what I think is, was happening at that conference that I went to. And so right now, it's a very scary time. One of the members of our community recently died after being on a nationwide tour talking about this stuff. All of a sudden, he gets this thing. All of a sudden, he goes to the hospital. They put him on a ventilator, and he died. So this is real. It's, the stakes are very high. That's why we're really not going outside very much right now, and I'm not doing very much right now. Because, look, I got all the time in the world. I'm not worried about the way this is going to work out. What I, do, what I am worried about is whether enough of you are actually going to do your part and not just expect guys like me to continue risking our lives for you. It's, it's a community thing. This is responsibility. I want you to take responsibility. I don't want you to tell me that I'm the problem. I don't want you to tell me that I haven't done enough for you, okay? I want you to do enough for you. I want you to think about the idea that you are not powerless, that you have the power. You have the power to change. You have the power to transform this world. And don't undermine what you could do as one person because single individuals have done incredible things on planet Earth. 
So let me read to you about these people who it says, again, in the Law of One, that they cannot choose freedom. And I think this is a very important point. You might get angry that some people just went ahead with it. They went ahead and did it. And they're going along with, the, with all the stuff that they're being told. They can't. They can't be free. They can't think about freedom. They're not capable of it because the pr propaganda and the brainwashing is too deep. They grew up in it. They grew up with the big three, CBS, NBC, ABC. They grew up with Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Post. Absolute credibility, man. That's it. It's, it's, it's the warmth of the, of the parent. It's the security. And, oh, well, you know, if, if my abusive parent tells me that I shouldn't be a bad boy by, like, talking about this stuff, I better do what they say. We, we so greatly outnumber them. This is ridiculous. It's ridiculous for them to think they can tell us how to behave. There's billions of us. There's very few of them. And no matter what they think they can get away with, they're not going to be able to do it. I've already told you, I believe it's mathematically impossible for this thing to work out in their favor. Literally, mathematically impossible. Okay? Let's go back to the quote now. Okay, so it says, The light of freedom would burn within those capable of such polarization, lacking the opportunity for the overt expression of the love of freedom, which is actually what's happening to me. I can't usually talk about this right now, right? I'm going to get censored. I'll lose my whole platform. Lacking the opportunity for the overt expression of the love of freedom, the seeking for inner knowledge will take root, aided by those of the brothers and sisters of sorrow who remember their calling upon this sphere. So that means brothers and sisters of sorrow, again, are wanderers, ET souls, probably like you. If you're a big fan of the stuff that I talk about, you're probably not a regular human being because you get into this and you like this, whereas everybody else, you try to talk to them about it, they're like, oh. They, freedom is a very difficult concept to, to envision. It's the freedom of thinking. It's the freedom to envision that the world is completely different than what you thought, that everything you thought you knew is wrong. That's a huge perceptual shift, and it is a necessary stage of awakening that we all have to go through that the world is very, very different than what we've been told. Science is very, very different than what we've been told. Many, many pieces of this consciousness science, the idea that DNA is, is a product of a intelligence that arises out of quantum mechanics itself. The DNA molecule is made by the intelligent laws implicit in quantum mechanics. We've had proof of this for a decade, 10 decades. Nobody ever is going to promote it because the press is controlled. They don't want you to know that you have a spirit. They don't want you to know that God is real. They don't want you to know that there is an afterlife, that you will never die, that you don't need to be afraid of your death. I mean, honestly, right now, it, the fourth density that's coming is a total reboot of the earth, and they say in the Law of One that even people who died and are in the afterlife will come back into bodies when we go into 4D. If you lost your mother, if you lost your father, if you lost your brother, your sister, your wife, your husband, and you, and you grieve about their loss, they're going to be back. You're going to see them in a new body when we go through this. That's what the prophecies tell us. No one is lost. No one is really dead. You're going to hang out with them in a physical body again. They might be in a different configuration, but that's what's going to happen. So the brothers and sisters of sorrow, when you can't overtly express the desire for freedom, it leads to the inner seeking. And so what they're actually doing right now is giving us some advice. And what they're saying is, yeah, you, don't, you can't really talk about this stuff because you're going to get taken down in most of these platforms. But what you can do is encourage others to pursue spiritual growth because that's really the core of what we're here for. Now let's go back to the slide. Okay, so then he's going to follow up on this thing about this global war, because he's very concerned. Are you saying, then, that this possible condition of war would be much more greatly spread across the surface of the globe than anything we have experienced in the past? Answer, this is correct. It's a very on-the-nose prophecy. And they didn't say it's definitely going to happen, but I think they were pretty sure that it would, and that's why they talk about it. I just didn't want to believe it, so that's why I said, well, you know, if this actually happens, I'll talk about it. But up until then, I don't want to put that out there. Okay, let's go on. Okay, so that was the quote. Uh, I'm sorry, it doubled again. I don't know why. Now look at this. As they continue to answer this question, this is what they say next, the very next thing. 
there are those now experimenting with one of the major weapons of this scenario. That is the so-called psychotronic group of devices. Whoa! One of the major weapons of this scenario, psychotronic. Well, let's look up that word real quick, okay? So this is what I did. I did on DuckDuckGo, uh, just to give them some shout-outs. What is psychotronics? Declassified yet partially redacted company documents from September 1975 reveal a mysterious subtle energy device developed by a Czechoslovakian scientist named Robert Pavilta. According to the report, his psychotronic devices, called psychotronic or Pavilta generators, can draw, store, and transmit the life force energy of an individual. Hmm. Draw the life force energy off of an individual. Control the way that people think. Let's look at another definition, this time from Wikipedia. Psychotronics. Psychotronics may refer to psychotronics parapsychology, a Czech term for research and development in parapsychology. Psychotronic harassment, a.k.a. electronic harassment. The very second term that comes up. And remember, what did they say? Psychotronic devices. One of the major weapons of this scenario, right? Okay. So now let's go back. So it says psychotronic harassment. And then, as you see, there's a disambiguation on that. You can click on the psychotronic harassment link. So let's click on that and see what happens. Now we go to the wiki page for electronic harassment. And it says, this article is about purported harassment and torture with covert energy weapons for the harming or harassing via the World Wide Web or similar. See, cyberbullying. That, that's good. Okay, yeah. Electronic harassment, electromagnetic torture, or psychotronic torture is a conspiracy theory that government agents make use of electromagnetic radiation such as microwave auditory effect, radar, and surveillance techniques to transmit sounds and thoughts mm, into people's heads, affect people's bodies, and harass people. Individuals who claim to experience this call themselves targeted individuals or TIs. They claim they are victims of gang stalking and many have created or joined support and advocacy groups. Multiple medical professionals have evaluated that these experiences are hallucinations the result of delusional disorders or psychosis. Of course, it couldn't possibly be anything other than that, because nobody would ever try to aim a microwave at a human being. Nobody would ever think of that. Sure, of course, nobody would ever try to invent this stuff, right? Nobody would ever try this. I mean, right now, we had this whole situation where the vice president of the U.S. at this time, or at least who appears to be, she went to a particular country and appears to have gotten an electromagnetic attack. And that was in the public because she suddenly fell ill and then had to cancel the trip. And, and there, I read a lot of stuff about this. So we, we are talking about this. These, these things do exist. Okay. So once again, going back to the slide, it says there are those now experimenting with one of the major weapons of this scenario, the so-called psychotronic group of devices. Now wait for it. Part two which are being experimentally used to cause such alterations in wind and weather as will result in eventual famine. Whoa! So now we're talking about weather control. Well, how much have you heard me talk about weather control? Obviously, I believe that the polar vortex sliding all the way down to Texas and plunging them into a deep freeze, it was literally apocalyptic for many people. That's not normal. I believe that was a manipulated event. I believe most of the fires that we're seeing are manipulated. I believe that they are igniting fires using satellites. It's not that hard. You just set up a beam and you zap one area, get it going. But also now we have PV, this, this project uh, that's out there. And the, the second word means truth. You, you probably know who I'm talking about. They've done a lot of incredible work. And just recently this came up, okay? Their headquarters was destroyed by a strange weather system which just so happened to hit their area of Long Island, New York the hardest out of anyone. Now let's talk about this again, okay? A hurricane slides up the east coast of America, makes landfall in Mamaroneck, New York, the exact area where this group is located who's doing the most damage to the usual suspects right now. And they have this horrible flood. Let's look at the next picture. Their whole office was wiped out. I mean, I watched the videos that were taken in this room, and now you can see the water line on the brick wall in the back is below the logo. 
You see the desk is all waterlogged. I mean, this it was the, the floodwaters went up so high. And he says, Our hearts are broken today as our headquarter office in Mamaroneck was devastated by the storm last night. Mamaroneck was one of the hardest hit cities in the northeast. Hmm, no surprise. Continuously attacked by external forces since the beginning when we were nothing but a laptop and a carriage house. Out of ashes, we continuously rise. We lost a lot, but we are alive. Our insiders need us to continue fielding tips. The parents from last night need us to continue exposing corrupt teachers, journalists, like the patriots who support us and protect us. We will never be defeated by outside forces. It is only because we choose to stop persevering. When we go back to the drawing board, there is always that flame that never goes out. That's freedom. A flame that doesn't go out. Because of what we stand for, the only ones who have the power to stop us is ourselves. Now here is a view of the outside of their building, and you can see even after the floodwaters had hit their highest point and were now receding, cars are all the way up almost to the top of the windows there. You see that? Unbelievable. So then he posted this about how the headquarters was destroyed, and it was very, very sad. However, the community rallied around. And now, as of September 10th, a couple days ago, they've already raised more, almost half of $1.5 million to make sure they're back up and operational as soon as possible. So did the negative really gain anything from this? No. If this was done by some type of apparently psychotronic device. In fact, when we get attacked, we only become stronger. And that's really the key that the Law of One talks about. When the negative is attacking you, one of two things are going to happen. You're either going to raise to the level of, of the attack and go above it by, you know, pushing for freedom, pushing for love, defending your healthy boundaries, because that's a very important part. It's the forgiveness with boundaries. You can't just do one without the other. If all you do is forgive people, then, then you're going to be destroyed. So you have to set these boundaries. So what happens is they thought they were going to wipe them out. They, the elite thought they were going to destroy this team. And instead, now they've raised $750,000. They're going to raise one5 I'm sure they'll get it all. And they're going to come back bigger and better than ever, newly angry with a new taste for justice in their mouths. So it didn't do anything except to give us all a story of hope and inspiration. And that's the polarization. That's the many challenges and seeming distresses within your illusion. The world isn't real, and if we die, we're still alive, consciously, in another form. So the fear of death is how we get manipulated, and what they're trying to do is keep beating you up so that you stay in that reptilian brain, you'll do something dumb, like a bunch of people doing bad things at a protest, then they can bring in all the stuff, then they can throw us in camps, then they can crack down. That's what they're trying to do. They want us to screw up. They want us to be unevolved. They want us to act violently. They want us to do stupid things so that they can then justify the severity of the response so that the people I'm reading on next door will say, oh, I support this. We must stop this horrible problem. These people, we must stop them. Whoa, dude. <laughs> no, we're not going to go there. All right? So let's let's read on from this prophecy from 1981 from the law of one because they've just said that the, it's it's going to be a global thing guerrilla warfare all over the world all at once weird weapons that don't cause large-scale uh property damage and there's weapons plural and that this includes psychotronic many people are worried about what might be going on with their phone what might be going on with with subliminals you know frequencies all stuff that's beamed at us i mean it's entirely possible that there are things going on that change the way that people think. And certainly another form of mind control, obviously, is, is information. If you present people with certain information compellingly, and the big con is that, well, there's so many different authoritative sources that say this. How could it be wrong? It could be wrong because rich people bought all those things, and they're telling you what they want you to hear. <laughs> okay, so we're almost done now. Let's, let's go back to the slide. If this program is not countered, this is the quote from 81, the prophecy, and if it proves experimentally satisfactory, which obviously it now has, or at least to some degree, the methods in this scenario will be brought out to the public. Well, they have been made public. It's all, all this stuff is now public. And again, methods could include the combination of the weapons alluded to, guerrilla warfare, and the narratives that they're now putting out in the media necessary to make this work. Now look at this. There would then be what those whom you call Russians hope to be a bloodless invasion of their personnel in this and every land deemed 
valuable. Wow. Wow. Let's read that again. There would what they hope to be a bloodless invasion of their personnel in this, meaning America, and every land deemed valuable. That is exactly what some of the briefings that we've heard about right now are talking about, that, that the country gets divided up into green zones controlled not by Americans but by the UN, and that they force you to go to these places, and they force you to take the shot when you go there. Whether the shot's going to hurt you or not is another story, but even just the idea of all this is, is absolutely terrifying, whether you think it's bad or not. It's still terrifying to lose your freedom, to be taken away, and that they hope that they can bloodlessly invade. Okay, we're seeing this right now. This is a very, very present issue. Now, going back to the slide once more, yeah, this is a big wow, but here's the final end of the prophecy that kind of tweaks it a little bit in the opposite direction, where they say, however, the peoples of your culture have little propensity for bloodless surrender. Now again, I do not advocate this. All they are doing is making a sociological comment on the way that Americans are, and it should be pretty easy to tell based on how much gun ownership we have. I'm not saying do anything violent. In fact, I'm telling you, do not commit any acts of violence. It's very, very important. Let the system handle this. It's all, we're on a storyline here, folks, and the storyline is that eventually this is going to be dealt with on an administrative level. And there's probably going to be some type of governmental action that is now irrefutable. I would expect that they will be told or demanded to step down. And I will expect that they will say no. And I will expect that at this point it gets very dangerous. And we all need to pray. And we all need to make sure that this thing does not work out the way they want to. Because this law of one prophecy is extremely terrifying. They're talking about a, an invasion now, they use the word Russians, but right in the next question after this, they talk about the fact that Edgar Cayce's prophecies are real and true. And the Casey prophecies, as I told you in a previous video, you can go watch, said that China would be the problem. And he said this, I believe, in like 1936 or 1937 or something, that if the, if the people of America do not return to the ideals upon which their country was founded, that once again must the hated people from Mongolia rise. That's a direct prophecy from Casey. I'm not getting it exactly right. I'm paraphrasing. But the Casey prophecy said that if we didn't get it together, that there was going to be this attempted invasion by the Mongols. Okay, you can pretty easily see what this is. So they do say Russia, but again, when you're dealing with the cabal, it's not really state-specific. It's not correlated with any one country. However, in 1981, at the peak of the Cold War and the fear of nuclear war, Russia would be the most obvious choice. China wouldn't have even made any sense. They were all riding bicycles at the time, not at all military power. But now it makes more sense. But again, I think it would have tweaked the free will laws a little bit too much. So going back to the slide, I just want to make the point here that the ETs have our backs. And all that we really need to do is, is, is meet them halfway. Okay, so when I say meet them halfway, what do I mean? Well, that's what we're going to do now in the last 15 minutes of what's become a three-hour show. Sorry, didn't, you know, uh, yeah. So um, it's, it's three hours. I'm not going to keep it much beyond that. Um, so what I'd like to do right now, and, and sweetheart, you can start playing with the slider and slowly fade between the camera angles as I have my eyes closed just to make it more interesting. Uh, you know, the green one is, yeah, I know, I know. You already said that. I know. It's at the end of the meditation. We'll do that. Okay, so... I guess real quick, before we start the meditation, let me say this. Um, I have a new insider, a, a person who, who knew Pete Peterson directly, an aerospace engineer who is also a CEO, and who I actually have been working with on this and getting this technology out. He knows way, way more about this stuff than I do, classified information. Most of it he can't disclose. However, he has come forward. We have created a program. It's called The Disclosure, and what we're doing is we're analyzing what's already been disclosed in the disclosure that we've gotten. And then what we find out, for example, is that the DIA declassified 154 pages of documents about things like nitinol, which is a substance that is a memory metal. You crumple it up, you let go, and it folds itself back out into a flat sheet. There's a lot of strange things in those 154 pages, and nobody has talked about it. If you want to go read them, you can do it right now. 
The, the man who did this, his name is Anthony Bregalia, and the website is ufoexplorations.com. I do hope to interview Anthony in the future. I have a very favorable opinion of him. Some others have not. And he's talked about this on his website. I think he's doing an amazing job. But whether, whether you like it or not, Anthony's the guy that the DIA gave these 154 pages of documents to. Go to ufoexplorations.com and you can read them yourself. But I don't expect you to understand it very much. And I didn't understand it. And I know a lot about this stuff. So when I bring in an aerospace engineer with experience in the classified world, he does understand what this stuff means. And I now feel that I have a much, much greater understanding of levitation and anti-gravity than I ever had before. So what we have is coming up is a five-week course. Uh, we're going to have... Actually, you can, you can put up that little cryon on the bottom. You can hit the... Oh, yeah, so it's, it's for the three free webinar series. So we're going to do three free webinars to inaugurate the five-week course. Those are free... If they don't take my channel down, I'm going to do it here. If they do take my channel down from what I just said, I'll do it somewhere else. And I'll, I'll email you. So again, if you go to thedisclosure.com, it's never been more important that you give us your email address because that's the only way I'll be able to keep in touch with you. And then it depends on what email you have, whether you're even going to see it, but at least I have a better chance. If you don't think this is real, if you don't think the threat exists, please bear in mind, people in my community who have the kind of big, big numbers that I do, it's a very bad idea right now to be trying to talk about this stuff. That's why we need new people who don't have that heritage, they don't have that legacy, they haven't had teams of people studying them and their psychology for years trying to figure out how to manipulate them. All right, That's what we're dealing with. It's just like jury selection where the lawyer is going to try to pick the jurors who are the most apt to win his case. These negative forces will analyze you once you become a public figure. They will figure out what your weaknesses are, and they will try to exploit them. And they will attack you. They will attack your money. They will attack your livelihood. They will attack your family. They will attack every single aspect of your life. And I've been doing this for 25 years. I know what I'm talking about. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's not a big deal. Even if you die, you're still conscious. You still have your soul and we're going through this fourth density, and you'll come back for fourth density anyway. So I don't look at death as a deterrent. That's why I wasn't afraid to do this work, because I know I'm immortal. I know I will always exist, and I know I can never die. Therefore, why would I be afraid of what somebody tries to do to my physical body? But then there's another caveat above this, and that is that the universe is not negative. The universe is actually positive, and it's regulated by positive beings who will protect you as long as you uphold certain basic moral and ethical codes in your life. These entities, these negative forces, they cannot just knock people off. This is a very common misperception. The law of one goes through this extensively. You have to authorize your death. And as a public figure, it comes about through highly unethical behavior, which I have fastidiously avoided my entire career. Somebody was just asking me on the phone today, how are you still alive? There's no ambiguity here. I'm not afraid at all. I'm not afraid because we have laws in place. We have higher beings who protect us, and that is real. And so if you go and sign up now at thedisclosure.com, give us your email address. I will, you got three free things coming up. If they don't appear here, they're still going to be appearing. So please make sure you give us your email address. Sign up at thedisclosure.com. Get that in there, and we will get you this information so that you can have this. Now, what's going to happen is there's three free ones. And then afterwards, we go through a five-week program where every Sunday there's going to be a new release. Some of them are probably going to be more than three hours long. Uh, I think they're all at least like almost two hours long. Where I'm talking with this new insider who right now we're calling Ben. Uh, we're not going to reveal his identity until as close to the end as we can because our company is still you know, getting financed right now, but we just got some, actually, thank God. And we're about to get more, hopefully. So... I want to try to, like, avoid this kind of backlash that we get until the last minute. But I want to tell you in advance that this is going to happen. So when you sign up at thedisclosure.com, you get the three free webinars. And then if you want to sign up for the actual course, there's five weeks where we go through a lot of really fascinating information. When the website comes up next week, you're going to get to see all these amazing topics that we discuss. Lots and lots of mind-blowing things. I mean, how long has it been since we've had a new insider? been like decades right let's go over to this camera real quick it feels like it's it feels like it's been 
uh, it feels like decades, but I mean, it's only been a few years, but like the last real significant insider who came forward was William Tompkins. And it's been dead quiet. Nobody that really has new amazing intel, but this is one who I've known for, again, 12 years. I know a lot of what he knows. Uh, probably he knows a lot of things I don't know because he can't tell me. But the point is, we crack open the lid, and when you watch this, you will know for a fact that levitation is real. And then after I had already shot all five weeks, because it's all done, we've already got it in the can, we're, we're editing now, so it's already finished, uh, which means nobody can stop it, okay? It's already been done. Uh, after we do that, then when I was hiking in the woods the other day, I had a huge revelation, and I realized, wait a minute, all of these new things that he's told me about how anti-gravity works explains all this other stuff about levitation, like Jesus. How did Jesus actually accomplish levitation? What laws of physics allow human beings to levitate? And can we study them and can we apply them to our own lives so that when these fourth density energies start showing up more and more and the opportunity to levitate, let's say, becomes available, maybe if we study levitation, we understand the physics of levitation, and then I actually show you how that physics applies to biological levitation, of which there's several very interesting examples. So I had to add week six. So some of the ads that we shot, it was only a five-week course, but then after I did the woods meditation, I'm like, whoa, I got to go into this stuff about Jesus and how do we levitate. There's many, many fascinating reports of Catholic saints, Christian saints, and saints in other uh, religions like Buddhism levitating. And we have very specific things that they said about what it felt like and what happened to their mind and what happened to their body and what did they do to make it happen. I want to share that with you because not only do I want you to have levitation technology in the form of machines, I want you to have levitation technology available to you by consciousness because that's what ascension is supposed to be about. So many crazy things are happening on Earth. The ability to levitate might come faster than we think and once you understand the energy fields responsible for levitation and for free energy, actually it turns out levitation and free energy are generated by the same natural phenomenon. So that means that when you develop these abilities, you will be able to call upon power. You will be able to call upon energy. And you potentially, by studying this stuff, it may make it more likely that you will be able to achieve this as the laws of physics on our planet change. So again... Go to thedisclosure.com, sign up now with your email address. It's free. You're going to get three free classes, which I may have to do. I don't know. I might have to do it on Twitter. I might have to do it on Zoom. Depends on what happens to me here because I've said a lot of crazy stuff today. But, you know, it seems like there's a little more tolerance now. It's not, you're not as likely to be instantly taken down as you used to be. So that's why I was willing to push the envelope a little more. This course, by the way, is also critical in terms of your participation as a patriotic citizen of Earth to help crowdfund the efforts that we're making to get you this technology as the training wheels before you get to levitate with your mind. We have put in our own money to make this possible. In fact, instead of buying anything else, this is what I took the majority of all our money and put it into. And that's important because that shows I'm not going to go indulging in myself. I take the money that I earn and I put it towards improving the world. That's what we've done. Garbage technology, free energy, anti-gravity, hover cars. This is what we're doing. This is what your money is going towards when you sign up for this course. You are helping us change the world. You are doing your part. And instead of it just being some random donation, where maybe you, you, we send you a, a picture in the mail or something, right? No, this is a whole course. This is like a fascinating, mind-blowing, multi-hour. I mean, we had... I think 21 hours of video that we shot in, in, the, in the hyperdeck, which again is Hollywood quality. You know, we captured everything Hollywood quality. So it, it's going to look great. It's going to sound great. Uh, and it's going to be you helping us crowdfund our future so we can get the heck out of here and go to the Hawaii planet. It's apparently only seven light years away where nobody wants to kill you. So you know, one of the things we thought about is, hey, if this thing doesn't work out, let's just get some prototypes and get the heck out of here. Okay, because we will have that option. But I'm not going to run away. I'm staying on Earth. This is our home, and we have to defend it. And so now that I've told you this, and, and hopefully you'll go to thedisclosure.com, sign up. Uh, you can get into this course. 
We have discounts available. We have a, a payment plan that we're probably going to do. But at the beginning, there's, there's going to be two packages, the regular package and the VIP. And the VIP gives you a little bit more. You're going to get an access to a live Q&A with the insider, and we will make every effort to cover your questions. So that also allows you to, to up your contribution a little bit more if you would like to help crowdfund this a little bit more. So this is very exciting. I already know what we shot. I'm very excited about it, and it transformed everything I thought I knew about levitation and how I would explain it to you. So I hope you will be there for us at thedisclosure.com. Now I'd like us to go into the meditation, because whether you help us that way or not, it's free to help us with this meditation. You don't have to pay anything, but please do this with us now. Okay, here we go. I'll go back to the wide shot in the middle. And <clears throat> All right, let me take a... Oh, I, I spilled my water. I don't have any water. <laughs> well, we're almost done. Here we go. I'd like you to close your eyes now. And just let yourself relax. We've discussed many interesting, fascinating things. We've discussed many readings that came in in the year 1999 predicting exactly the situation that we're in right now, actually augmenting the prophecies from 1981 that we read in the Law of One. In 1981, we were told the possibility existed for global conflict, even in America, some kind of strange guerrilla warfare. We were told that unusual weapons might be used, we were told that these weapons would focus on not destroying quote-unquote valuable sites and personnel, but instead focusing on just generating casualties. That this was desired by those implementing this, and that there would be a psychotronic complement to some of what they were using. The ability to control thinking, and the ability to control the weather, and where the weather goes and what it does. Eighteen years later, in 1999, we seem to have gotten a follow-up where they say, we know what's going to happen, we know how it's going to proceed. There will be a new international financial agreement. The deep state will be exposed and defeated. And freedom will be restored on planet Earth. Even those most brainwashed will be brought to the truth and will see it themselves. Therefore, as you breathe more and more deeply, I ask you to be fully confident, fully confident that this is much bigger than any one group of individuals. This is much bigger than any one country or any one political ideology or any one movement or any one organization. We are literally seeing a galactically driven evolution of consciousness on planet Earth happening at the exact time in human history that the ancient prophecies told us to expect it. The prophecies told us what to expect. The prophecies told us it would appear as a type of global guerrilla warfare. The prophecies told us it would not use nuclear weapons, that there would be new weapons. And the prophecies tell us that it's not going to lead to surrender, that we will not back down, we will not be taken over. It's not going to turn out that way. In fact... All we have to do is deeply tune in to the seat of the soul. For when we are not able to overtly express our desire for freedom, we then revert back to directing others to the path of inner seeking, to the path of truth, to the path of knowing. For it is in this opening of the heart, in this relaxing of the mind, the relaxing of the mental tension in meditation, as we're doing now, breathing deeply, as we allow ourselves to relax, we alleviate the traumas that keep us in fight, flight, or freeze. We alleviate the traumas that keep us only using the center of our brains to think, disallowing access to critical thinking and intelligence. We open our hearts, we open our minds, and we allow the possibility to exist. That maybe this isn't all doom and gloom after all. Maybe this is the greatest act of synchronicity ever seen on planet Earth. 
an almost unbelievably well-orchestrated collective event to unveil the truth about the negative elite on planet Earth so that everyone can understand what was going on, what needs to be done to fix it, and why we want to co-create a better planet in the future. A planet without financial tyranny, without corruption, without betrayal, without lying, cheating, and stealing. A planet where we feel safe in our homes, safe in our communities, safe to walk around and breathe the air, safe to interact with each other, hug each other, smile at each other, shake hands, and interact in social situations. We are also affirming that those brave men and women who are stepping forward now will succeed in their endeavors, for they are supported by none other than the Christ consciousness itself, the mind of the galactic oneness, the mind of our Creator. We are being supported. We are being urged forward. The Bible and other religious texts told us what was going to be happening right now, and it is true. There is the exposure of great evil. There is the great exposure of sadness and depression and fear. But what do we get? On the other side of this, we get a world with far more financial prosperity. We get a world with amazing new technology that we may be helping to co-create now by being a part of this. We get all of these new things that make life much more enjoyable and apparently now the laws of physics allow us to begin accessing more of our paranormal abilities, including potentially levitation and telepathy. Right now we are co-creating this new reality. We envision and we authorize a world of peace. We envision and we authorize a world of abundance and prosperity. We envision and authorize a world of love. A world in which we are not being lied to, in which we are not being deceived and stolen from, in which we get to enjoy the rewards of our hard work, and collectively we all move into a higher consciousness. This is possible. The Great Awakening is happening now. Many have seen through the lies for the first time, and many more are awakening every day. As you tune deep into the white light of the One Infinite Creator, Imagine that white light surrounding you, nourishing you. Imagine it revivifying you and extending out then to all others who are suffering on planet Earth. Imagine the entire Earth bathed in this beautiful, conscious, loving light. For this is the truth that we are co-creating right now. Take this joyful, uplifting feeling that you have in your heart and mind and send it into the earth so as to reduce the possibility of violent riots, uprisings, and conflicts so that we may navigate through this entire awakening journey with peace and with prosperity. And now, let us certify that we have done a magical working, a positive magical working here. We have used the name of Jesus, the name of Christ, to authorize the ascension, to authorize our future. We are mature enough. We are ready to no longer act as children. We are ready to become adults. We are ready to step up and manage our own world from those who want to take it from us. And so it is. Now I'd like you to Ease your way back into the room. Take a nice deep breath. And here we are. I think I can actually keep it to three hours if I stop right now. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm David Wilcock. Hopefully you will go to thedisclosure.com. Sign up on our website there. Give us your email address. Otherwise, we may lose touch with you. It's entirely possible. We're looking at the possibility of a blackout still happening, whether electrical or internet. That could happen. If that does start to happen, that's probably when the war and the arrests are taking place. But I also was given a briefing not too long ago that there may not be any war. This may all happen peacefully, in which case I would expect administrative solutions involving 
I don't know, court cases and Supreme Court this or whatever, state court that, but something is, is coming in which if so many people see the truth and they don't want this regime in power, it will not be able to hold power. And the military may be called upon by the people. That's what I think is going to happen. So it's all good. Don't freak out. Don't commit suicide. Don't do anything dumb. Don't get all drunk and crazy. You know, just relax. It's all going to be good. I'm your host, David Wilcock, here with my beautiful wife, Elizabeth, and we'll see you next Sunday. Thanks for watching.